St. Petersburg. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer, who are introducing the all-new LTD and Mustang. Easy-tasting Budweiser, the king of beers. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. And by AC Delco, quality automotive parts for quality motoring. AC Delco. From Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, CBS Sports presents the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Thacker with Roman Gabriel. These are two building ball clubs. Each, of course, figures it has a good chance to win this game. And you know, Roman, this Tampa Bay defense has been gaining stature now about every weekend. But today, they're going to face one of the most unique offenses the NFL has found in several years. Well, Jim, I agree with you. Kansas City with their wing T leading the league in rushing. Tampa Bay with their 34 defense leading the league and stopping the rush. So we're today we have offense versus defense. A lot of youth, a lot of inexperience, but I think we're going to have a fine game. We also have two coaches that uh, go back to their college days, but Marv Levy, the new coach at Kansas City, coach University of California, and John McKay, of course, with the Southern California. Tampa Bay has won the toss and elected to receive. George Ragsdale is standing back deep near the goal line, and kicking off will be Jan Stenerud for Kansas City. No, that's going to be a change. It'll be Zinnan and Decision, number seven, out of the Canadian Football League, and away we go in Kansas City. A very high kick by Decision. Ragsdale back, but it'll be taken by Bucker at about the 10. He is spun down out of fumble Kansas City at the 16-yard line. Tremendous break. Dave Lindstrom was the player who hit him downfield to recover at the 16. Lindstrom has the football, and Kansas City got it. A big break there, Roman. You're right, Jim. That's the kind of break a young team like the Chiefs need. Get on that board first and pressure the defense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Tremendous break of the outset for the Chiefs, coached by Marv Levy. And now you're going to see something new in the NFL, the wing tee, which Levy calls the unselfish tee, with three running backs. And it leads the NFL in rushing this year. A double wing setup. Tony Adams brings his wing back in motion. Handing off here goes to Tony Reed, trying the right side with very little success. Jarris White, the left corner linebacker, brought him down. But something new. And Roman, there's a look at it. All right, Jim, here's the wing T. Actually, Kansas City sets up with a split end to the left. They bring their right half back up and put him in a wing position opposite the tight end. But at this point, Kansas City has two tight ends in with no split end, and they have one remaining back with both backs up in the slot. Second down, about nine to go. This attack has averaged over 227 yards a game. Inside handoff to MacArthur Lane. He pounds the middle inside the 15. A penalty marker is thrown. MacArthur Lane, who had a great game a week ago, 144 yards, stopped by Leroy Selman, the bellwether of Tampa Bay's three-man front. A great first-round draft choice out of Oklahoma. There's the signal. Preliminary signal was against Tampa Bay. Offside, that could cost them five yards. And will give Kansas City a golden opportunity here with second down and rather short yardage. Uh, you know, Number Jim. 76, defense offside. You know, Jim, what's difficult for a ball club to prepare is to prepare for, for an offense that they don't see from week to week. Uh, Kansas City, Kansas City using the wing tee, this is something they don't see from week to week. There's the offense for Kansas City. The back, Tony Adams getting a start uh, for the first time. McCarthy Lane, we told you, had a great game last week. Second down and four. Big chance here for Kansas City to break on top. Here's Adams rolling after the fake, firing the end zone incomplete. He had everybody covered in the end zone. Henry Marshall was in there, but great coverage now by Tampa Bay. The rest of the offensive lineup starting for Kansas City today. You saw the backfield. The receivers, there are only two of them, but Walter White, the tight end, is one of the best in the business at his position. There are three running backs, as you know, for Kansas City. The offensive line anchored by Juck. Jack Rudney at center, a former All-Pro Bowl selection. Third and four for Kansas City. It's a crucial play now for the Chiefs. They got a big break, recovering the fumble. Here's 
a sweep of the halfback, McKnight, and McKnight won't get it. He stops short of the first down inside the 10-yard line, but short of the markers. They're in a wing T right. This time the a tailback or a wing back goes in motion. They try to overload to the weak side, but Tampa Bay wasn't fooled. Cedric Brown made the stop. The kicking team is coming on for Kansas City. That wing tee can cause problems, Jim, because now you get a wing back up in a blocking with blocking support right beside that tight end. It spreads out the defensive alignment and does cause a little problem, especially when you don't see it from week to week. This will be a try of 24 yards by Jan Stenerud, who is six out of nine this year. Has it up, and Kansas City has drawn first blood. They got the initial big break on the opening kickoff, but then sort of a moral victory for Tampa Bay because they stopped the Chiefs from scoring the touchdown. They bring up the field goal try made good by Stenerud, and Kansas City is off to the quick lead here today by three to nothing as Stenerud, one of the veterans of this team from back in the Super Bowl years, puts his team out in front. Uh, the Chiefs are off and running in Kansas City. I think the Chiefs could have used that horse right there, but they need a little help. Kansas City on top, 3-0, opening minutes. Introducing a whole new breed of Mustang. The all-new 79 Mustang from Ford. With a new aerodynamic design. Precise handling and Mustang performance from options of V6, V8, even a turbocharged engine. Mustang for 79, the new breed in two-door and three-door models. Capture one at your Ford dealer now. You have strange language in this country, like the name of this beer. And I's Bush Natural Light. Tastes good. But I need an interpreter when I order. I used to need an interpreter myself till I realized you don't need a whole vocabulary, just one little vocabule. Vocabule? Is that V or V? Just say natural. Beer tender. Two more. Natural. Coming up. Oh, you want clean glasses? No thanks. I wear contacts. <laughs> <laughs> Number 23, George Ragsdale waits deep for Tampa Bay for the second time in the first two minutes of the game. Zenon and Recession will kick off for Kansas City. Again, Tampa Bay waits to get the ball. This time it'll be Ragsdale right at the 10. 20-yard line. Ooh, he's hit at the 22. And on his home, keeps fighting to the 30. Good uh, fighting second effort by George Ragsdale, who made the last 10 yards of that 20-yard return on his own up to the 30-yard line. This time, Tampa Bay holds on. But Kansas City got in front. They one minute and 35 seconds after recovering a fumble on the opening kickoff. And it was Stenerud's field goal that capped the... Uh, Nine-yard scoring marks and four plays. First and ten now for Tampa Bay at their own 30-yard line. And here's Doug Williams coming off his best performance of the year. Last year, last week, 321 yards he gained against Minnesota. And let's see what he can do. Hand off to the fullback Jimmy DuBose. Up the middle he goes for a short game. The offensive lineup for Tampa Bay. Doug Williams starting at quarterback. We told you last week he completed 16 out of 35. Ricky Bell and Jimmy DuBose behind him. Wide receivers of John McKay is getting another start. Had a good week last week catching three. And Jim Obradovich is a change in place of Jimmy Giles. But Giles will see a lot of action. And a young offensive line that is getting better. Greg Horton has taken over at right guard. Johnny Davis is coming fullback. Second down, about eight to go. Ricky Bell runs into a swarm of red jerseys. Before he can get to the 35-yard line, Dave Rosamuck, an inside linebacker. And uh, this is another three-man front for Kansas City. This is a young one. All three of these men in their first year of pro football are still the number one draft choice. What a great one they expect him to be. And the linebackers. There are four good ones, too. Whitney Paul was a down lineman just a year ago, and they think Grace Bainey will be a good one. And the deep man. There's Emmett Thomas playing here in his 13th season. First pass by Williams. Right side on a comeback to the sideline. It was intended for Morris Owens, but incomplete. 
uh, Jim, they were trying to hit their outside receiver into the strong side of a zone there. The ball was, wasn't thrown well, but he was well covered also by Kansas City's left cornerback. Have a score here, too. Pittsburgh, three, Atlanta, nothing. Five minutes into the first quarter. Rocky Blyer, a nine-yard run. Terry Bradshaw, a six-yard run. The best start Pittsburgh's ever had, I believe. They're 8-0. and oh. They won the last eight home games, and they're off and rolling in that AFC side. Here's the punt by Green. Back waiting deep is uh, Eddie Payton. Payton has it over the 25, looking for a block at the 30. Penalty flag is thrown. Payton is down on the 34-yard line, but the flag is down. And this usually means clipping, but we'll wait and see. But Kansas City will get the football again back in its own territory this time, but leading 3-0. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. Update on that. Personal pitch. foul, clipping on the run back, number 35. First down. Update on that score, Jim. It's Pittsburgh 17, Atlanta nothing. And here in Kansas City, the Chiefs with a very early lead, 3-0, now getting the ball for the second time of the game. Wherever you may roam, you'll find our name is known. You can trust Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco Freedom Battery. I trust Delco Batteries. And my reputation rides on Delco Shock Absorbers. Because you never know when you're going to need Delco's smooth control. <laughs> when the road is curved and rough, you need shock that's tough. You can trust Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco shocks and batteries. Delco shocks and batteries. Thanks, Delco. Owens Corning built these three houses at its research center in Ohio to study the effect of three different levels of insulation. Nobody lives inside, but hundreds of electronic sensing devices measure the heat that flows out during winter and in during summer. What we're learning here helps us give you better advice about insulating your home, whether it's old or brand new. Want to know about insulation? Ask the experts. Ask Owens Corning. Kansas City now going back to the attack, but back deep and, uh, after the penalty, and it's on 17, first and 10. Wave to attack, up the middle, McArthur Lane. Pretty good opening. Penalty flag is thrown again into the pileup. Leroy Selman made the stop that time on MacArthur Lane, who is the oldest running back in the National Football League. Signal is against Kansas City. And the score. Look at that one, Roman. Washington 7, Detroit 9, just like we were talking about before this telecast, Jim. Washington could be down. That's the type of game that could have a letdown after beating Dallas. Let's listen here on the penalty. Illegal use of the hands was what Gene Barth was saying, and it cost Kansas City again. That's two consecutive penalties, counting the one on the punt. And now they're back to their eight. And it is first down and 20 for the Chiefs, a first and 19. Coming back to the counter play was the tailback Reed, Tony Reed, and he runs into stiff opposition. Mark Cotney, the strong safety, came up very quickly for Tampa Bay to help Charlie Hanna and number 76, Dave Pear, all teaming on the stop. Those are the kind of things that you can do from the wing tee, play action, counter plays, hit right or left. Actually, in my philosophy of the wing tee, as far as this ball club is concerned, the Chiefs have very little experience on defense, so they want to keep their defense off the field, and by doing so, they're using this offense to rush the football. Ball control type uh, attack, that's what Kansas City has concentrated on this year, and it's paid off for them up to now. Back uh, straight in the pocket, those Adams up the middle, he's hitting his back horse belt at the 15, still in his feet at the 20, and pounded over the sidelines around the 22-yard line. Horace Belton, a free agent in his uh, first year, and Cedric Bow made the stop. Actually, all we have here, Jim, is a straight drop back out of the wing tee. They checked the back down in the middle, linebacker's responsibility, and Horace is wide open. 
interesting statistic, Roman, is that of the 55 passes now completed by Kansas City this year, counting this one, only five have been caught by wide receivers. And no touchdowns thrown by the quarterbacks. Right now, we have another official timeout with Kansas City in the lead, 3-0 over Tampa Bay, first quarter. They're doing it in every city, town, and hamlet in America. An estimated 10 million people. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans are encouraging it because we're trying hard to hold the cost of health care down. And people who stay fit help. So to all of you out huffing and puffing in America today, Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans want to say thanks for giving the cost of health care a good run for the money. Introducing a new American road car, the all-new Ford LTD for 79, with more front seat room, more rear seat room, more window area, and more handling ease than last year's LTD, plus the power of a V8 engine standard, a road car to take you across town or across the country. This land is your land, this land is my land. To test drive the all-new LTD on your own roads, see your Ford dealer today. Live from Nashville, Johnny Cash hosts the celebration of country's finest. It's the 12th Annual Country Music Awards, Monday at 9.30, 8.30 Central and Mountain. The left cornerback of Tampa Bay, Jarrett White, was shaken up on that last play, but he's okay. Just rattled around a little bit. He's out, and Curtis Jordan has come in to replace him. See fans trying to get their team going here. It's third down. A big play. It's got six to go. They give it on the quick hitter up the middle to Horace Belton, and he doesn't get the first down. Stopped a couple, maybe three yards short. Rich Wood, a linebacker. Cecil Johnson, another one. He was in there. Here's Pittsburgh really rolling now, Roman. Yeah, halftime score. Pittsburgh 17, Atlanta nothing. As you notice on that last play, Kansas City went to the normal pro set and tried to run a draw play. In third long situations, Jim, Kansas will go to the normal pro set. And recession is back to a kick in Kansas City. They don't try to pronounce his name. They just refer to him as Marv Levy's punter. Here he is from the Canadian Football League. Good rush, a beautiful kick, though, upfield. Danny Reese waiting has on his 37. Reese to the 45, needing one block, and springs down the 40. Reese might go to the 25, the 15, and out of bounds. Brilliant run back by Danny Reese. All right, Jim, he had a lot of help on that run, but he did a great deal of that on his own running ability. Now they look at it from the end zone, Roman. This is the kind of thing that's been hurting the Chiefs. Their, their, punting, their punt coverage hasn't been real good. They've had some block. They've had some run back. And as you can see here, White does, or Reese does most of this on his own, setting up his blockers, keeping his feet under him, and there's Samuels making the tackle. Well, now it's a golden opportunity for Tampa Bay to get back and perhaps into the lead. They're inside the Kansas City 15-yard line, first and 10 of the 14. Williams sends two wide receivers to the left side and rolls the other way. And the give is to do bowls. Behind the blocking of Bell gets about a yard and not much more down around the 10. The short game, maybe two or three yards on the play. Penalty flag is dropped again. These are two young ball clubs, Roman, and they've both been plagued by mistakes and errors, and here's another example right here. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that hurts your ball club, making mistakes early in the ball game. But both teams have some excitement about them, and they have the kind of performers that are going to get better once they get that experience. Tampa Bay is set back by the penalty to the 24. It'll be first down and 20 from that point. Kansas City in the lead, 3 0. Well, let's look for let's look for the Buccaneers to go to their number one guy, number 85, Morris Owens. Owens is wide to the right side. They give it instead to Ricky Bell. Bell looking for daylight. Doesn't find much. There's too much red there, and he is pulled down after pickup of only a yard or so. Tim Gray, the strong safety, reacted very quickly to that play to help out Sylvester Hicks, who will be right in. Bell is stopped on the 23-yard line. There's a score here, Jim. Halftime, Washington 7, Detroit 9. Another score, Baltimore nothing, St. Louis 3 in the first quarter. Two teams really struggling there, Roman. St. Yeah. Louis and Baltimore in a frustration year for both of them. Second down now. 
at about 19 for Tampa Bay. Williams looking. Good protection. Williams, the middle. He's got his man up a 10-yard line. John McKay, I think it is, around the 10. A nice game to John McKay, the son of the coach. It's a good read by the young quarterback. His number one receiver, Morris Owens, is doubled on the right side. He comes back to his secondary receiver, McKay, over the middle, who gains some yardage there. No question about the arm of Doug Williams. It's a rifle, and he has a low percentage. He's the next to the lowest-rated uh, quarterback in the National Football League, hitting only 34%. There's going to be an extra penalty set on here. Let's listen. Personal foul was against Kansas City. So that uh, brings out a uh, automatic uh, first down. Don Parrish, the nose tackle, guilty of the personal foul. So now Tampa Bay has an old new set of downs to work with. It's first and goal, just outside the five. Morris Owens in motion. They get a penalty flag thrown again. They just tried an off-tackle uh, sweep by Ricky Bell, and the penalty flag was thrown in the backfield. I'm sure it'll be illegal motion against Tampa Bay. It'll cost them again. Dave Rosemuck did a good job plugging up the hole for Kansas City with Sylvester Hicks. Jim, when you're working behind an inexperienced offensive line and a team that at this point is not accustomed to winning. Kansas City is going to decline the penalty. They'll take the defensive play, which uh, threw Bell for a loss of a yard, figuring that five more yards is having no effect on the field goal try anyway. So instead, it brings up a second down. It's second and goal for Tampa Bay. Wide right Owens. To the left is McKay. Draw play. Up the middle, DuBose. DuBose to the one. Jimmy DuBose. University of Florida, great. And he is back in full physical form and making his presence felt here for the Buccaneers. All we have here is a quick trap straight up the middle, handing off the ball to Debo, who hits right up into the middle of that defensive line. As you can see here, he's going forward, which most good running backs will try to do, get that momentum going forward. That's a pretty solid hit that uh, he put on uh, Gary Spaney, an outstanding young linebacker for the Chiefs. Now it's third and goal. For Tampa Bay, it's a very big play for Dick Williams. He gets it to DeBose. He will not make it. DeBose is stacked up. The Chiefs have held to bring up fourth down. Well, Tampa Bay is given the same choice as Kansas City had earlier. There it is, just straight ahead blocking a counter, counter play to the fullback, trying to come up the middle, but there's nowhere to go. There must be six red shirts there to, to make that tackle. Swarming type defense by Kansas City. Very similar to uh, the defensive methods used by Tampa Bay, as a matter of fact. Here's an exciting score, Jim. The New York Jets 35, the Bills 7. Bruce Harper, 81-yard punt return. Looks like the Jets are bouncing back. Tampa Bay's going to go for it. Fourth down, Bell in motion. Williams on fourth down to Bell. He's got it at the goal line, but I don't think he's in. He did not get across. And Kansas City will take over. That's a case of not knowing where the goal line is. He should have gotten into that end zone before he caught the football. Gary, you watch the play. Little play action fake. Williams throws the ball out there. He has his man, but Bell should have gotten in the end zone before he even decided to catch the football. Pretty good coverage by Gary Green to watch Green number 24 here for Kansas City. That Tampa Bay's threat is stopped, and Kansas City retains its lead of 3 0. Give me an Anheuser Busch Natural Light. Just say natural. You see, you doesn't have to call it Anheuser Busch Natural Light, and you doesn't have to call it Anheuser Natural, and you doesn't have to call it Bush Natural. Just say natural. Johnson's right. Oh, you can call me Ray, or you can call me Jay. Or you can For a great Johnson. tasting light beer, just say natural. But you doesn't have to call me Johnson. Two naturals, please. Please don't ask him his name. Name? You can call me Ray. Or you can call me... 
Good old Charlie, that's me. Somebody's got a dead battery and they call good old Charlie. And I jump start them. Rain, snow, day, night. Well, this time I tell them, get your own Die Hard. The maintenance-free Die Hard has extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. This is the last time. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, any time. The Die Hard sold only at Sears. look at this play. All right, Jim, here's the play action fake by Williams. The ball is not thrown that well, but Bell had plenty of time to get into the end zone before he made the catch. Here he's on the goal line. If he's in the end zone and makes the catch and any part of that football is over, he gets a touchdown. Bell made a little effort there at the end, trying to get the ball over, but he's already been stopped in. Hansen now put back deep in a hole. MacArthur Lane trying to wedge it out to get a little room. Stacked up by Dave Pear and Charlie Hanna. Jim, I think it's going to be awful difficult to go 98 yards with the wing tee. Right now, Kansas City just worried about going 10, trying to get this out of uh, danger. Here we are, Buffalo 7, New York Jets 35 in the second quarter. Well, uh, Buffalo had won two in a row, and the Jets have been on the slide, but now they're coming back today. Top rushing team in the NFL right now to hold. Second down and nine from its own two. Again, Lane. And again, he's stacked up by a wave of white shirts. On top 61 is Dewey Selman, who leads the Buccaneers in tackles. He had 67 coming into this game. And at the bottom, 76, is Dave Pear. What a strong fellow he is. And Charlie Hanna made the initial contact. I know you were telling me earlier, Jim, that Marv Levy of the Chiefs stated that their play action hasn't been that successful. Successful, but as much as they run from the wing tee, you would expect to see more play action. I think there's a pretty good uh, axiom in football, Roman, that if you can run on a team, then you can pass on a team. But it just has been the case here for Kansas City's concern. If you can pass on them, you can run on them. I guess it works both ways, right? <laughs> third down play, a big one for Kansas City, third and eight. A wide play. It's a fake and a keep to the left side by Adams, and there's the deception to get out of the wing tee. But for uh, Tampa Bay, Mike Washington refused to get, be drawn in, and he was out there to make the stop on Tony Adams. So Adams made a nice fake, sending everybody to the right. Now watch him keep it. Here it is here. This is an exciting play for the crowd, especially down in this area of the field. But I don't know whether that's very smart to do in this situation. Watch Washington, number 40, is out there to cover the play. So punting from his end zone, Andrew Sisson gets it out of there nicely. Retreating is Danny Reese all the way back to his own 36-yard line. A beautiful punt. And Reese has stopped short of the 40 and 50, and Kansas City comes up with a good kicking play. Andrew Sisson booming one out of a dangerous spot, and Reese stopped around the 48-yard line. So Charlie Ane made the stop. All right coming up on CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 4.30. The USTA Women's Indoor Championships we're all looking to see Chris there, maybe Martina, another matchup from oh, the Wimbledon the Jockey Club Gold Cup. This will be live coverage of the Falls Triple Crown Handicap and then the World's Strongest Men Championship competition. Yeah, I noticed there are two of my old buddies Matusak and Kolb of the Steelers. Matusak with Oakland. Kolb is supposed to be able to bench press 570, so I bet he can bend a lot of bars. That's all next Saturday as Tampa Bay goes to work. Jimmy DeBose to the 49, Don Parrish hitting down there. Pick up will be two yards for Tampa Bay, second down and eight. Now a couple of scores, Cleveland seven, New Orleans nothing in the, in the uh, first quarter. And here's the New England-Philadelphia score. Uh-oh, New England 17, Philadelphia 7. The Eagles have won three in a row, Roman, your old team. But, uh, They'll come back in the second half. Well, New England's got a lot at stake, too. You know, they're tied with Miami for the Eastern race. Second down and eight for Tampa Bay. Bob on the flat to Ricky Bell. Bell with running room to the 45. He's in Kansas City territory and maybe a first down. I think he has it. Around the 43-yard line, Gary Barbaro, the free safety, was in there with Tim Gray, the other safety, to make the stop. But Ricky Bell caught it off the flag just to do a little running on his own. That's something that's hard to teach a quarterback to, Jim, is dump the ball out to your running back whenever you see a downfield receiver covered. Here we go again. Just a straight drop back. His receiver's double on the right side. He gets the ball out to Bell, who has plenty of running room. 
And Bell hasn't caught that many passes, so he might be a receiver we'll see more often today. Was well, first down, and on the first down play, up the middle they go with the ball. Art still, and on the tackle for Kansas City, ball carrier was Jimmy DuBose. Larry Mucker has replaced Johnny McKay. McKay has bruised his hand. They're X-raying it now in the Buccaneers uh, training room here at Kansas City. Jimmy Giles has come back in. Oh, New York Jets 35, Buffalo 7 at halftime. A runaway. Yeah, the Jets are coming back after those two straight losses. What do you say? Second down play. A power sweep by Ricky Bell. Bell pulled down from behind the 40 by Art Still. 252 pounds, six foot seven. Art Still, the number one draft choice for Kansas City out of Kentucky, and you saw why there. He ran down Ricky Bell from behind. That's John McKay, student body right. They used to call that student body right, student body left at SC. All the talk here about Kansas City and their running game. John McKay has always been an advocate of the run too. That's right. Both teams trying to move that football on the ground. Trying not to make mistakes. I guess they figured if you put the ball in the air, there are too many things that can happen to it. Uh, here's a guy who can put it in the air. It's third and eight for Doug Williams. Looking for ground. Plenty of time. The middle of the foul. He can't hold it. It's a fumble. He had it long enough. And who will get it? Nope, they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Now, one official had let it go, but the other one kept in, waving his arms. Incomplete pass. Well, you judge. That's a straight drop back here. They're doubling both outside receivers. That gives Mr. Williams Ricky Bell over the middle, but he is smacked hard. Ball might have been called a completion, but so often they don't in these kind of cases. That was Dave Rosemuck who uh, came in with a crunching tackle. And it uh, denies Tampa Bay the first down. And the punt now. Eddie Payton is back deep. Dave Green will punt. There's his average. A good one. The third best in the NFC. Over 43 yards. He's going to angle it here for the sidelines. Green kicks away, though. Oh, into the end zone for the touchback. So Kansas City this time will put the ball in play at the 20, which is quite a relief from the time before when they were back on their own one-yard line. So the Chiefs still on top, 3-0. And the action here today and next week in the NFL, you'll see more action coming your way. Detroit will be at Atlanta. Tampa Bay goes to the Big Apple to play the Giants. Your Eagles, Roman, will be entertaining the Redskins. That will be an interesting one. And Dallas will go to St. Louis. While uh, doubleheader games will be Los Angeles versus Minnesota, Minnesota or New Orleans versus San Francisco. Consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Some cities will only see a single game due to NFL's blackout policy. On first down, Adams looking off in the flat, and uh, there's MacArthur Lane can't hold it. Adams on first down wanted to go. Might have been just a little release valve job because he was looking deep. And Lane took his eye off the ball for an instant, and that's often a fatal mistake. That's right, Jim. The concentration there wasn't the way it should have been. He had a split receiver down. A linebacker was in his vision. Here it is. He's looking downfield to the split receiver and goes out to the back. 73, Charlie Hanna applying pressure. This is what makes a quarterback's life miserable. Right through the fingertips here. Looks like one you might have thrown, Roman. <laughs> Off the right tackle now. Short gains being chalked up here, and it'll bring up another third down situation. MacArthur Lane, who had over 140 yards last week, is stopped now by Dave Pear and Charlie Hanna. And Kansas City's ground attack thus far has been pretty well offset by Tampa Bay's defense. They sure have, and that's what Tampa Bay does well. And speaking of strength, which we were talking about earlier, Jim, Dave Pear is one of those people that has the strength and speed to go with it. Bench presses over 400 pounds and also runs a 40 in, what, 4'7". Two minutes to go in the first quarter, and Kansas City's rushed for only 18 yards in the ballgame. Passing situation for Tony Adams. Pretty good rush on Adams up the middle. He has got Henry Marshall at the 45 for a first down, and he is still around the 48-yard line. Curtis Jordan might have saved a touchdown because lanky but fast Henry Marshall had pulled down the pass by Tony Adams, his best of the game. There they go, Jim. Uh, Tampa Bay sending a linebacker out of that 34. Leaves Marshall one-on-one -on -one coverage here. Adams goes to the right receiver, hits him in stride, and that's the way you like to hit them when they're coming across the middle and gain a lot of yardage that way. Pretty good open field tackle. First down, though, for Kansas City, and now the Chiefs are in a good field position at their own 48. 
wide in motion. They give us to Lane. And Lane running hard to the left side over the 50, stopped by Mike Washington as he goes to the Tampa Bay 48-yard line it's going to be. Lane, the workhorse again today, his 144 yards last week, year, last week against Buffalo was the second best of his career. He had 146 back when he was with St. Louis against the Washington Redskins. Jim, you can see when they go in motion with that wing back from the tight end side, they almost revolve back into another tight end with Tony Reed blocking up on the left side, giving him two backs still coming around to the weak side, such as they're doing here. There's the motion now. They come away from the motion, and it is Reed trying to find some running room for the strong side, and Mark Cotney again makes a fine play for Tampa Bay. He's up to assist the linebackers. Initial hit up there was uh, made by the Buccaneers. Looks exciting to see people running around in motion, but unless you gain yardage, it just doesn't count. Dave Lewis is the guy who made the initial stop. Tony Adams, number 11, starred in the World Football League, has been the backup quarterback here in Kansas City. This is his first star this year. Mike Livingston was benched today by Marv Levy. He was interception prone in his previous stints here in other years. Has been today, and a great rush by Tampa Bay. Leroy Selman breaking through. And Mike Washington was in there to help him. Big defensive rush. Here, MacArthur Lane has to block here. He doesn't do it too well. As a result, he's smothered. The financial capital of America. Home to hundreds of investment firms. But whose thinking is sought by corporations and governments? Who is quoted almost every day in America's business press? Yet who always has time to help any investor of any size? You know who. There are lots of investment firms, but there's only one, Merrill Lynch. The Computer Society. It's big news everywhere, and now it's in color TV. Computer Color 330 from Magnavox. Computer Color 330 with 25% more lines of resolution. A sharper, crisper color picture than ever before possible. Touch Tune Television with Computer Color 330. New from Magnavox. Now from Magnavox, free remote control for a limited time only when you buy any Computer Color 330 Videomatic TV. This is Uniflow Motor Oil from Exxon. Change to it, and after break-in, here's what it could do for you. It could save you money, because it could save you gas. About $2 worth for each quart it takes to make the change. That amounts to a gas savings of about $10 between oil changes. Uniflow from Exxon. Saves money. Saves gas. Change. After change. After change. After change. After change. A year ago, Marv Levy was coach of the year in the Canadian Football League, and now following in the footsteps of Bud Grant, moves into the NFL, and here at Kansas City has installed a wing tee, which has been pretty much stymied today by this charged-up Tampa Bay defense. Andrew Sessions putt to start the second quarter. Back is Danny Reese, going to let it down, and it goes the right way for him. Into the end zone for the touchback, and Tampa Bay will start from its own 20 now as Kansas City goes into the second quarter, leading 3 to nothing. The Chiefs held only 17 yards rushing in the first quarter, which is well below par for them. They've averaged 227, top figure in the NFL coming to today's game. Here's an update uh, on the Baltimore-St. Louis game. Baltimore now leads 7-3. to three. And here, as we get underway in quarter number two, Kansas City still on top. 3-0. From the Sierras to the Smokies, people are discovering what makes the great outdoors great. Beer makes it good. It's just one choice. There's no debate. Nothing else comes near. Beer makes it good. When you're out of Schlitz. Schlitz makes it great. You're out of beer. 11 million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Every drop, show lagered for quality since 1849. Schlitz makes it like no other good. Schlitz makes it great. Kidnapped to school, Mom. 
Let's get him. Our Ranger will catch him, Tucky. This Ranger Lariat is a 79 Ford, and it's built top with top twin I-beam front suspension and optional four-speed overdrive. You didn't think you could get away from our Ford, did you? So long, Tucky. Where are you two going, man? We're riding off into the sunset. Nothing the sunset in the other direction. <laughs> Tough Ford. America's best-selling pickups. Right on the 20. That's where Tampa Bay will start here. After the punt, first and 10. Trailing 3-0. Morris Owens comes in motion. The tailback for Ricky Lee. And Ricky Bell has his bell rung by Mr. Don Parrish, who crashed through for Kansas City, and the defense is dominating this game for both teams. Look at here, Jim, just a little crossfire. One back to the left, one coming to the right, but it sure didn't fool Parrish, did it? What's so unusual about these three, four defenses, uh, Roman? Well, now, uh, prior to the last couple of years, not very many teams were using them, so they were hard to prepare for. Now everybody's used them, so now it's not that hard to prepare for. Second down, a little over 10. Williams again with time, zips the ball. It's tipped back there by Spaney. A linebacker was intended upfield for Mucker. Rosemuck was also breaking through. The incomplete pass, though, will bring up third down. There's number 55, Rosemuck, who is only 212 pounds. Dropping back, he's, he's reading the quarterback's eyes here, and Williams probably shouldn't have thrown this ball. It would have taken a heck of a throw to get it in there. As a result, it was an incompletion. Nice play by Rosemick. Rosemick and uh, number 59, Spaney, also in the center of the play. Two fine young linebackers for Kansas City. Third down play for Doug Williams. He needs about 10 and a half yards. Williams upfield and almost intercepted. That was off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Jim Obradovich, the tight end, and Ricky Odom, a rookie from Southern California. California, the same school that produced Obradovich was there. Jim, this was a point we were going to bring up earlier. A young quarterback with an inexperienced offensive line. Watch number 59, Gary Spaney, give Doug Williams the old eye treatment here. It's difficult to throw when you can't see and when you're sitting on your pants. Speaking of eye treatment, we got a little bit there as we prepare to go back now to pick up the punt of Tampa Bay. Dave Green, the only man who's ever punted the ball for Tampa Bay, is back deep. Sands at his five. Eddie Payton is waiting for Kansas City. Ten-man rush. Not a good kick. Off the side of the foot of Green and takes a Tampa Bay bounce, however. Gets past Payton. Over the 40 is going to take a great roll down around the 35-yard line. Might have gone deeper. Had it not been touched down here by Tim Collier, number 44, who uh, was trying to put on a little act here that it touched a uh, player from Kansas City, but that actually happened in a Tampa Bay game earlier this year at Minnesota. But this time, the ball goes over to Kansas City, although Tampa Bay gets a good break to put the Chiefs back in their own territory. Kansas City leads 3-0. When you're out here, your toolbox is back there, be glad you got a Crescent adjustable wrench. When you're up here and your toolbox is down there, be glad you got a Crescent adjustable wrench. Crescent, one tool that adjusts to fit many different size nuts, even metrics. But it's not a Crescent unless it says Crescent on the handle. For a limited time, get this Crescent wrench plus these Crescent pliers for one low price. Crescent, another fine name from the Cooper Group. When a guy uses a quality motor oil, he's saying, engine trouble, stay away from my door. What he wants is protection, and that's what STP motor oil is all about. His special formula has seven important additives. It's made to protect and lubricate an engine for 15,000 miles. That's extra protection, and it's tested and proven, so try it with confidence. Yeah, for my car, it's STP. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, and certainly nice to be here. What a beautiful day it is, although there's some blue spirits here over the Royals' defeat by the Yankees last night. And the Royal Stadium right next door here to one of the most magnificent sports complexes anywhere in the world. Now here's the shift. Wing T formation for Kansas City. And spurting through the middle is Mark Bailey, who's taken over at fullback, and that's the best running play of the game for Kansas City. Rudney must have had a pretty good block up front on the uh, nose guard on Dave Pair of Tampa Bay for that play to open up. 
Mark Bailey, who's replaced MacArthur Lane at fullback. He is the second year from Long Beach State. Has carried 61 times for 228 yards. The three starting running backs for Kansas City averaged over five, almost six yards a carry per man. Second down and just inches to go. They give it to Bailey. He's got the first down. He's up almost to midfield. Bailey driving hard to about the 49. Jim, getting back to the 34 defense, you have to have a real strong and fast nose guard such as Tampa Bay has and Dave Pear. And the two other important people are the two inside linebackers. A guy like Selman, who's big, strong, generally lines up on the tight inside and takes on all the guards when they come at him. Then a guy like Richard Wood, who is not big but has tremendous speed and can get to a play. A three-time All-American he was at Southern California. Now Adams on first down goes up the middle and it's dropped here by tight end Walter White and there's a rare scene because number 88 just almost never will drop one that's thrown near him and he should have caught that one. Should have had that ball Jim. Tampa Bay double coverage on both outside receivers. Kansas City going to the right receiver but they've got to catch the football. Second down and 10 for the Chiefs. It must be difficult to catch the ball when you run it all the time. So true. Larry Dorsey has come in now. That uh, replaces Ted McKnight. And this will put Kansas City now in a regular pro set. So they're away from the wing team. They've got Dorsey to one side and Henry Marsh to the other. Right back in the pocket goes Adams on the fly pattern to Dorsey. And it is broken up at the 10-yard line intended for Dorsey. And back there was Curtis Jordan, who's replaced Jarris White at the left corner. By the way, we can tell you White had a mild concussion and probably will not see any more action, at least in the first half of this game, and Jordan, who replaced him, did the job there. I think I like Kansas City better in the regular pro set. They open up the game a little bit more. You get a little more enthusiasm when you see them drop back and throw the football. Here's the score, Jim. Chicago, nothing. Green Bay, nothing in the first quarter. Cleveland, seven. New Orleans, nothing in the first quarter. Now that's Sam Bertigliano going back to New Orleans, where he was assistant coach. Doing a good job. A little homecoming, he certainly is. Third down and 10 for Kansas City at the 49. Adams drives it, intercepted by Tampa Bay, and is grabbed off by Dewey Selman. Seven to 45. Selman into Kansas City territory. The first interception of the day, and it's put Tampa Bay into Kansas City territory. First and 10 of the 43, and a penalty flag is thrown. There it is. Adam, look at that move by Pear. Adams going back. Weak side coverage going to the right receiver, but smoke tree city. There's Dewey Selman. Hey, is he going to be some kind of great player? But a penalty will be marched off against Tampa Bay, and it's going to be Kansas City's ball. Let's listen to this. Number 76, roughing the passer, first down. Well, you pointed out Dave Pear, Roman Gabriel, and that time he cost them. You know, Jim, they never called those kind of things on me. I guess I was too big. Whenever you're a big quarterback, the officials generally overlook the fact that you can get knocked down, too. Hey, when you're as big as you are, nobody comes in on you, Roman. We all know that. <laughs> First and 10, Kansas City, a break for the Chiefs. They're at the Tampa Bay 36. <laughs> There's the shift again. This has put McKnight in the tailback. Now they uh, send backfield uh, Reed in motion, but they give to the fullback, and the car, Mark Bailey, gets uh, very little. Grudgingly, he's given down to the 33. And Dave Pear, who might have been fired up a little bit, brought him down. There's uh, a fall behind. Half second quarter, Green Bay three, Chicago nothing. Bart Starr doing a job up there in the Pack City. Well, this is some uh, rivalry here, Roman. Goes back to 1921, those two. Chester Markle, a 41-yard field goal. Bears need to win that game to get back into a tie for the division lead, too. You know, Jim, we might see some type of reverse here any minute now out of this wing team. Right now, McKnight's on the way. Now the quick handoff to Bailey hitting straight ahead. He goes off left guard right behind Bob Simmons down to the 30. Bill Kohler made the stop. Might not be a bad call. Tampa Bay really pursues. And out of this wing tee, it could be, could be a good play. We're going to watch the defensive line. We want to tell you there have been some changes made. 77 is Kolar, 71 is Crowder, 
and Wally Chambers is number 60. There's a guy, Richard Wood, weighs 215 pounds, taking on an offensive guard that goes about 255. But as they say, as long as you keep your base and your feet under you and keep your eyes open, you have a chance. Kansas City wants a timeout. I don't know whether John McKay is upset with his defensive line or he's giving them a rest. But Hanna, Pear, and Selman all have gone to the bench. Their relieving troops are in, and Kansas City is threatening here at the Tampa Bay 30. Hey, nice. Where'd you get it? Avis Rent-A-Car. Avis introduces rent-a-cars you wish you owned, like the Chevy Caprice. I think I'll park it myself. The Cadillac Sedan DeVille. The Olds Cutlass. Buick Regal. The Pontiac Grand Prix. Rent-a-cars you wish you owned. Avis now features GM cars. Avis, we don't know From blazing heat to paralyzing cold, season after season, the J.C. Penney battery has the power to start your car over and over, year in and year out. And it never needs water, ever. It's so dependable, it's warranted for as long as you own your car. If it ever fails to accept and hold a charge, return it with proof of purchase. We'll replace it, free. It's the last battery your car will ever need. Next Saturday, CBS Sports Spectacular features highlights of the USTA Women's Indoor Championships, part two of the world's strongest men competition, and more. You'll see. You saw it on CBS Sports. Big, big third down play coming up for the Chiefs. They got a break here, getting the ball on the penalty. And they've com uh, converted only two of eight third down situations. Right now, it is third down and four to go at the top of eight third. Adams off of the flat. He has hit Bailey over there, but he's not going to go anywhere. Bailey is pulled down by a linebacker, and it's going to be fourth down play. Dave Lewis, a left side linebacker, number 57, was over for Tampa Bay. And it'll bring up a fourth down try and a long one by Jan Stenerud. Stenerud, who has the only score of the game thus far, a 24-yard field goal in the opening minutes is in to try one now for a substantially more distance. This will be a 50-yard attempt. His longest this year is 46. That's not going to be even close. Uh, what? <laughs> what that? Left. <laughs> now, uh, Roman, here's where the rule uh, comes back into prominence a little bit because... Tampa Bay gets the ball not at the 20, but out at the 32 and a half, 33 yard line. Yes, and as exciting as their offense has been thus far, we might look for something exciting. In. Well, the Buccaneers will take over when they come back, trailing 3 0 here in the first half in Kansas City. So you can get on your TV set from Zenith's new video cassette recorder. Because every time you record a show, you want a picture so good, it's hard to tell from the original program. Here's how good the picture is with a Zenith video cassette recorder. You've been watching it for yourself. You get the picture quality you want and the reliability you expect from Zenith. Here's a hundred years of tradition coming at you. Here comes the king. Here comes the king. Here comes the big number one. Here comes the king. But why the beer? The king is second to none. When you say the king is coming, let's hear the call. When you say but, you said it all. When you say but, you said it all. When you say but, you said it all. at uh, Kansas City. Tampa Bay sets to go into action. They're trailing by a score of 3 nothing. but are the New York Jets having a field day today in New York? Look at this score. New York 42, Buffalo 7 in the third quarter without Richard Todd. 81-yard punt return, 18-yard pen, all kind of action. First down play. Play action fake by Williams. Williams is going deep downfield. A mucker at the 30. Can't quite reach it. He was covered stride by stride by Emmett Thomas. 
as a deep post pattern by number 87, Larry Mucker. And you uh, got an idea there of just how Doug Williams can zing that football. He might have thrown that ball a little sooner. It could have been off to the races. I think he perhaps waited just a little bit too long to deliver that one. Second down and 10 now for Tampa Bay. Neither team has moved the ball with any consistency at all. Ricky Bell's gained only two yards today. Jimmy DuBose, 11 yards. So, Doug Williams going to the air. There's the pump fake. Now he is going to Mucker again, and he's got it at the 35-yard line. Emmett Thomas tried to make the stop, but Mucker was there, covered by Thomas. Pass off underthrown a little bit, and Mucker saw it first and came back. Williams does something here that Stabler of Oakland does quite a bit. A pump to the right, throws to the left, but he wasn't set. He didn't have his balance when he released the football. Mucker made a fine play coming back to get that football. That's the biggest gainer of the day by Tampa Bay, and it's put them deep in Kansas City territory now, the 26-yard line. Remember, the Buccaneers once were first and goal and couldn't score. Hitting off tackle, he'll get three, four yards, most of it on his own. Sylvester Hicks had him wrapped up, and DeVos spun free to get a pretty neat, nifty little gain out of it. Jeff Lloyd in there for an assist. Number 35 is back healthy again. He had had an injured leg and been out of uh, service some. Johnny Davis had replaced him. Uh, DuBose, who's a home state star from the University of Florida, too well this time and Whitney Paul was there to make sure Whitney Paul number 53 by the way is celebrating today his 25th birthday so from all of us happy birthday Whitney you know Jim we've been speaking highly of Tampa's defense ranked number one versus to rush well the Kansas City defense is ranked fourth in American Football Conference so they're not a bunch of slouches either uh, looking for the pass right here from Doug Williams on third down and four from the 20. It's a big play by Williams. Up the middle, he's got his man. It's inside the 15 for a first down. I think it's Obradovich, the tight end. Rolls him up the linebacker on the inside, making the stop for Kansas City. Number 46 is Tim Gray, the safety. That ball was drilled in there nicely, though, to Obradovich, who got the starting call today ahead of Jimmy Giles, number 86. That's a fine play there. They little, little tight end delay, send a tight end out to the flat, the fullback to the corner, take the linebacker off the tight end and bring him back underneath the coverage. It's the second scoring chance that the Buccaneers have had. They blew the first one, but now they're back first and 10 of the 12. Owens in motion. Give us to DuBose on the sweep. DuBose cutting behind the block. It's inside the 10. Stopped about the 8 by Whitney Paul again. So there's another birthday present for himself. And number 53 is third-year player. Tough to get outside versus the 34 defense because the linebackers have so much speed and they're already moving with the football. Difficult to get angles to keep them from getting there. Picked up about four yards on the play. It's to the 8-yard line. The second down is going to be a very long 6-yard to go for first down, eight yards away from going on top. <laughs> Little delay to DuBose up the middle to the five. Didn't get the first down, Sylvester Hicks made the stop. Hard still was in there too. Watch it again. A fullback draw, just a quick hitter up the middle. Nowhere to go, running over his own people there. Schumacher, number 78, stumbling and with nowhere to go with the football. DuBose has been the workhorse. He's gained 23 yards. There just hasn't been that much yardage picked up today. One big play was on the long pass from uh, Doug Williams down to Larry Mucker. Now I think Williams wants to talk to his coach, John McKay, because a crucial play is upcoming. Third down and three for first down. Third down and five for a touchdown. That's what's facing number 12, Doug Williams. Second quarter score, Jim. Baltimore seven, St. Louis 10. Jim Otis, a one-yard run. 
Philadelphia. Third quarter, Philadelphia 7, New England 24. Interesting game. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes has more fascinating stories to shed light on the American scene. That has to be one of the all-time great TV shows as far as I'm concerned. Then followed by Mary, Archie, and all the family, Alice. And if I ever get in trouble, I hope Kaz is there to defend me. That's a fine new show, Kaz. That's all tonight on CBS. Third down and three for Tampa Bay. Hey, Jim. Williams has talked with his coach. Yes, Ron. Look at Jets 45, 38-yard field goal by Pat Leahy. They just keep pouring it on. You know, they're taking a little bit out now. A little frustration, perhaps, for those two straight losses. Buffalo, team that beat Kansas City last week, suffered. Big play by Williams. Play action fake. Williams fires it in the end zone for Mucker. Broken up. Great play by Emma Thomas, the veteran. Mucker was there on a broken play. Williams spotted his man, but Emma Thomas, who has intercepted more than any other active player, was there. Watch it. Little play action fake. Williams rolling out. This is probably not a very wise thing to do. With the strong arm that he has, he got away with it. But if that ball is underthrown slightly, touchdown 100 yards for Kansas City. And Emma Thomas, a pretty cagey veteran to try and fool. He is now broken Johnny Robinson's all-time record here at Kansas City with 58 lifetime interceptions. As we said, that's uh, more than any other active player. Well, now Tampa Bay this time will go for the tie. Neil O'Donoghue is in to try. 22-yard field goal, and that's an easy one. So two short field goals. That's been the result of our scoring today thus far in the first half in Kansas City. And right now, we're all locked up between the Buccaneers and the Chiefs at 3-3, three to three, and the clock shows about six minutes to go in the first half. Well, we told you about tonight on CBS. How about tomorrow night? Another big lineup coming will be WKRP Cincinnati. I'm just waiting for that bunch to do a ball game. That's one of the funny new shows, followed by one of the all-time greats, MASH. Then the Country and Western Music Awards will host Johnny Cash, his wife, June, Roy Clark, Dolly Parton, Charlie Pryor, the whole bunch, all on Country Music Association Awards show, all tomorrow night here on CBS. Three, a new ball game. We start again. Eddie Payton will be waiting back deep for Kansas City, and Tampa Bay will be kicking off for the first time. Couple of scores here. Pittsburgh 24, Atlanta nothing. Pittsburgh pulling away. And here's an update on the Washington Detroit score. Detroit 12, Washington 7 in the third quarter. Benny Ricardo, 22 yard field goal. A little letdown, perhaps, by Washington. And Detroit was ready for this one, no question. Washington, one of the three remaining undefeated teams going into today's action in the NFL. Another one you're going to be seeing later in Los Angeles. Peyton gets over Peyton's head, goes to the end zone. It's going to go through for an automatic touchback. A low kick that might have been returned for some pretty good yardage had Peyton been able to field it. Got by him, and Kansas City will have it at the 20, first and 10. Tony Adams hasn't played very much this year. He's 13 of 22 for 146 yards, completing 59%. So this must be his baptism. Well, he uh, led the old world football league when he was there, and uh, although he started his career at University of Texas, did most of his college playing at Utah State. He was drafted on the 14th round by San Diego about five years ago, and today he's getting a starting call. Bailey, Bailey to the 22, and then driven by card. Bill Kohler was there with Mark Cotney for the Tampa Bay defense. Kohler continues to play in Leroy Selman's spot. Right now, Jim, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense is holding those running backs below those averages that they came into this ball game with. Reed with a 5.7, McKnight with a 6.1, MacArthur Lane. 7.2. I don't think they're close to that today. No, nope. they might put it all together for that. <laughs> Tampa Bay's gone 12 straight games, Roma, without giving any team as much as 200 yards rushing. There's a little change of direction. Here comes McKnight, good to gain over the 30. 35 McKnight, breaking it open. Across the 50. The 30 McKnight. 
McKnight to the 20. Hit down from behind at the 18-yard line. Sensational run by Ted McKnight. Randy Carter caught it from behind, but hold everything. It's all going to go back on the penalty, but we're going to watch it anyway. There it is, a little fake to the fullback, McKnight, or Bailey, and there's McKnight, number 22, coming around the horn, just a counterplay to the wingback. And there's uh, McKnight, or Bailey, trying to get down and help out. However, meantime, back upfield is chapter two of this play, and they're going the other way. There's a fumble. A fumble. Recover his own fumble and bring it back. <laughs> well, let's listen in. Gene Barth, the referee, you are home. Number 73, illegal use of the hands offense. Bob Simmons, the left guard, illegal use of the hands, and Captain Jack Rudney putting up a little protest to no avail. Rudney's saying that's just not fair. It's just not timely, that's for sure, for Kansas City, because it takes away from them about two-thirds of the football field, and now they're back to their own 16, and it'll be second down and 14 instead of being down inside the Tampa Bay 20. That's quite a contrast. Arnold Magano has come in the backfield. Ted McKnight, after the long run, has given a brief. Adams, quick fake, a look into Henry Marshall over the 30. Nice call by Adams. Had Knight coming on the slant and hit him for what looks like a first down. They put it on the 32, and that'll be plenty for a first down, and Kansas City now will start anew. After losing the long game, Knight comes right back and hits Marshall on a quick slant, and it's a pickup of about 16 yards on the play, and it's first down and 10. As good a defense as Tampa Bay has, they shouldn't have been fooled on that play. Second and 14 yards, they fall for a play-action fake. Adams completes the ball. Good throw by Adams. Tony Reed now the sweep to the right side. The guards are pulling. Reed turns the corner up to the 39. Richard Wood tripped him up. But Tony Reed has a vaunted running power. He's the fourth leading runner in the American Football Conference coming into this week, a number two draft choice last year. And we haven't seen that much of him today, but from what we've heard here in Kansas City, Roman, he is a good one. I like the way he runs, Jim. He runs upfield. He, once he turns the corner, he gets his shoulder going upfield, which, which continues to give him momentum to break tackles. Picked up seven yards on the play, second down and three. Cross back in the backfield to McKnight. First down as he goes almost to midfield. Ted McKnight stopped by Cedric Brown in the secondary, but it's a first and 10. Put it down the 48. I watched the right guard, number 65, come out and trap number 56 to linebacker. That's what makes this play. And it's home free until Cedric Brown comes up and has to make the tackle. McKnight did a pretty good job cutting behind that block, too. He sure did. He set that up real well. Ted came from Little Minnesota Duluth. Okay. Now off in the flat to Bailey, and he is thrown for a loss by Richard Wood. Richard Wood, that's one of the two inside linebackers Roman Gabriel was talking about moments ago, and you just saw why a crunching tackle that he threw on the receiver for a loss. Back at the 43. There's out, an outlet pattern there by Tony Adams. His downfield receivers recovered. Here's Adams dropping back, man in the flat, looking downfield, no one there. Get it out to the back, but there's Richard Wood. Big play man, and Batman brings him down on the 43. A loss to bring him second down at 15. Aha, uh -huh, Jim. The Eagles are coming back 24 to 14 in the third quarter. Long way to go, though. Two wide receivers, inside handoff, no running room at all. And uh, MacArthur Lane, I think it is, is stacked up around the line of scrimmage by Richard Wood again, inside linebacker. Watch Wood on the play. Uh, they have a stunt here. Wood coming around the right side, makes the play. What a fine play. It takes quickness, speed, and a little bit of experience to make those kind of plays. At the 44, it'll be third down and about 14 yards to go for Kansas City. So Tampa Bay will be facing a chance to get back the football when we come back with a tie score. The problem? Credit verification in a hurry. Can you hurry it up, please? My plane leaves in two minutes. I'm doing the best I can, sir. The Bell System solution. 
A system that verifies credit in seconds. My plane leaves in four minutes. Can I make it? No problem. Now ready for departure. Line 323, now 40. That's it? That's it. There you go. Thanks. Another case that shows the system is the solution. Since 1903, there have been more than 2,500 new cars introduced in America. But the best-selling new car ever introduced was this one, Ford Fairmont. Presenting Fairmont 79, again with lots of room for the money. With a great EPA mileage estimate for today's driving. With a range of sticker prices that are surprisingly low. From sedans to wagons to exciting Futura, the best-selling new car ever introduced, Ford Fairmont. Test drive America's success car at your local Ford dealer. minutes to go in the first half. Tony Adams has the word from Marv Levy. He goes back to Kansas City Huddle facing a big play. Third down and 14. And along about here, I think we have to credit the Tampa Bay defense, uh, Roman, because they have put Kansas City right where the Chiefs don't want to be, and that's in long yardage situations. That's right. Now they have to put the football up, and that's something that they don't, they don't seem to do very well. Third and 14. Out of the wing tee now with two wide receivers. They run the draw play, and here comes... 35 Horace Belton the play will not go as a stop from the 46th and there is Richard Wood on his third consecutive defensive foot play what a gem of a player for John McKay at the right inside line marking post as we said Jim Kansas City doesn't like to throw the ball now the Buccaneers will have some time here before the clock ticks off in the first half they'll get the ball Probably somewhere around the 25 or 30 yard line. Danny Reese is back there. Andrew Sisson waiting. Beautiful pot. Reese is going to let it try to go to the end zone, which it does. Andrew Sisson once kicked one 108 yards in Canada. So he can put it down there, and this will give Tampa Bay first and 10 at the 20. They'll have one minute and 16 seconds to go, 80 yards. And when number 18 used to line it up for the Rams, that would be Duxy. <laughs> we, did some, we did some pretty good numbers out there with less than two minutes to go. What do you look for here in this situation? Well, most of the time in this situation, the kind of defense you face, they change up, they go to something they're completely, they haven't shown all game. They loosen up and give you the things underneath. Your tight ends on the curl, your receivers, your back, so you can move the ball downfield. Off it intended to go for Ricky Bell. That's the second time today that Bell has been able to ha unable to handle it out in the flat. And Williams, I think we must say that time, might have zipped it a little bit too much. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that Ron Jaworski in Philadelphia, who has probably the same kind of arm that Williams has, it's taken him a while to learn. That ball travels pretty hard, especially a short distance. Here he is, Williams dropping back. He has Morris Owens to the right side on the curl pattern. He sees Paul, the linebacker, coming, dumps it off to, to Bell. The ball was thrown a little high and had a little zip on it. Ricky Bell coming out wide, turns the corner, 25 to 30, 32 yard line. It'll be a first down for Tampa Bay, Gary Barbaro. Nice shoestring tackle for Kansas City. First down. A pretty good sweep. Not a bad call here. Catch him off balance, catch him dropping back, run the sweep. Your left guard here coming in, making a fine block, but Bell sets it up and gets outside. Makes a lot of yards, about 10 yards almost on his own. First down on the play, still a little over a minute to go. One minute, one second. Ball will be at the Tampa Bay 31. A first down and passing will be in order here if Doug Williams wants to get the ball up in the end zone. High score, 3-3 between these two. The first visit ever for Tampa Bay to Kansas City. Only the second time these two teams have ever played. In 1976, Kansas City won the opening game. 28 to 14. Situation like this, Jim, they're going to, Kansas City's going to give you the short 10, 15 yard patterns, hoping that the clock will run out. To try to get deep in, in this time point in the game would be difficult to do. Well, there's McKay. He's already told Williams, don't worry about getting deep, just throw it short. Remember, he's 4 0 against Marv Levy back in their college days in the, what was then the Pac 8. One minute to go. Williams has. Hawker to the left side. Let him 
Barnes fires it up the middle. He's got his man, the tight end over the 40. This is Giles down into Kansas City territory. Gets out to stop the clock with 53 seconds to go at the Chiefs 30-yard line. A brilliant play. That's where you have to go, Jim. Straight drop back pattern, keeping both backs in. Giles is down, finds the open area. Williams makes a good move and gets the ball downfield. Giles, about six foot three, 241 pounds, and they tell me he runs four five, which he looked like he was motoring pretty good there. Great speed. They got him in the trade from the Oilers. Uh, that was in the trade that sent Earl Campbell to Houston. Pretty good protection in there, too. When you keep both backs in, you should get good protection. Got that ball just over some pretty good Kansas City coverage, and Giles was right in the open spot. Oh, here's the first down play. 50 seconds to go. Giles drills it to Mucker at the 10-yard line. First and goal for Tampa Bay. Barbara on the stop. Yeah. Boy, he zipped that one down to the 10. Grabbed by Mucker. Tampa Bay immediately calls timeout, but watch this arm, Roman Gable. Throwing it to the slot side. Good time to let the ball go and fine timing. Mucker hadn't seen that ball until he made his break. Ball was already in the air. Kid carries the ball in a good position. The release has a short, snappy release here. Right on the money. Kansas City now in the area that they are. They're playing too deep. Tampa Bay is beating the clock here. They took over back on their 20 with less than two minutes to go. And now with 43 seconds to go, the Buccaneers are first and goal at the Kansas City 10-yard line. And now they have a good chance to break on top. Tie score, 3-3. Williams has talked to McKay. Seven out of 14 today, another good day building, 92 yards. He was over 300 yards last week to set an all-time Tampa Bay record. Second quarter score, Cleveland 14, New Orleans 6. Archie Manning pass to... Archie Manning passes for a 16-yard field, or 16-yard touchdown, but the kick failed. Oh, Sam Reticliano trying to beat his old team. And uh, holding the edge. Cleveland having a good start. Lots of time here for Tampa Bay. They got time for three or four plays. See if Williams here will try immediately to go to the end zone. He has both Mucker to the left side. Looking for the end zone. Fires it on the down and out pattern incomplete. Mucker had gone down and was coming back. They might come back to that to his tight end. His tight end was open over the middle. I don't know whether they saw it, but here comes number 32 in to bring the play. They might have seen this. He has put both Owens and Mucker to the left side that time. Now the play is in from the sidelines. John McKay controls the play calling it for his quarterback. Second down and 10 at the Kansas City 10. 39 seconds. This is Owens in motion. He has drilled it for Owens incomplete. Ball was thrown wide. Good coverage by Barbaro as he had Morris Owens covered at the goal line. And the Kansas City player has been shaken up now back in the end zone. It'll be third down upcoming for Tampa Bay. Williams has taken two shots at the end zone after getting first and goal. And he's used up only about 10 seconds in the process. There's the Kansas City player who was tripped up on the play and they're looking him over. Jim, they have to have seen that upstairs twice now in succession. The tight end has come open across the middle. Let's see what they do. Let's see if they come back to Obradovich. We think it's Gary Green, the left corner linebacker, who uh, was injured on the play. So we're waiting to see down there. We want to remind you that on the CBS Sports Spectacular, next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time, the Women's Indoor Tennis Championships. A chance there you'll see Chris and Martina again. Then the Jockey Club Gold Cup live coverage. The World's Strongest Men competition. There'll be NFL lineman John Matuzak, among others, in that one. Then the baseball report. The World Series will be going next week. The Yankees against the Dodgers all next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time on Sports Spectacular. Fourth quarter score, Theismann to Gene Fugit, 12-yard, 21-yard touchdown pass, Detroit 12, Redskins 14. Well, the Redskins coming back. Uh, what a great start they've had, the best start since 1940. Number 24 is Gary Green. He was the number one draft pick a year ago by Kansas City. And he's walking off under his own power, but he's out of there. And Tim Collier uh, been put in to replace him. 
Jim, let's watch the tight end. Giles now is in for Obradovich, and Giles has more speed. Maybe we're going to see the tight end on this reception. Eliza's well, to the right and Mucker to the left. Four men in the end zone. There it goes. It's caught for the touchdown by Owens. Morris Owens on one that it was drilled in by Doug Williams. Tampa Bay is broken on top for the first time of the game with 30 seconds to go on the hand. Fine pass, fine read by Williams. They must have hurt us up top because Giles was double covered, leaving his flanker one-on-one -on -one coverage. He delivers this ball very well. And Tampa Bay now has broken the tie to go up for the first time of the game. They trail 3-0, pulled even. And in a very excellent, uh, impressive drive against the clock downfield, Duck Williams passing has put the Buccaneers back on the boards. Oh, Donahue for the try after, and he's got the point. And so the score now is Tampa Bay 10 and Kansas City 3. The Buccaneers get in with just 31 seconds remaining in the first half from Kansas City. Well, next week you'll see more NFL action here on CBS. Tampa Bay will be playing the Giants in New York. Detroit will be at Atlanta. Washington at Philadelphia. If the Redskins now can hold the lead, that'll be some showdown. Dallas at St. Louis. And then doubleheader games, either Los Angeles versus Minnesota or the Saints against the 49ers. And O.J. Simpson. Consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Some cities will only see a single game due to the NFL blackout policy. Oh, Tampa Bay, very happy now to get back on top before time has run out in the first half. As a matter of fact, Kansas City's going to have a half minute to do something about it. They send Eddie Payton back deep as Neil O'Donoghue, Dublin-born. Prepares to kick off for the Bucks. Low driving kick gets high Payton again and goes through the end zone for the touchback and for about the third time. Kansas City will bring a kick out of the end zone to put it in play at the 20, first and 10. No time off the clock. The Chiefs will have 31 seconds and we'll see if Tony Adams goes upstairs here to try to get back the touchdown. When you're behind, the wing tee may not become that much of a force. Uh, Ray, Roman, you think we may see more passing? Uh, they're going to try to get on the board with 30 seconds to go in, a, in the, the half. They better get out of that wing tee and get into a pro set so they can get the ball downfield. Well, they will, of course, have to here against the clock. But I was thinking maybe looking forward to the second half, they may have to go up more. Well, they're still not that far behind, though, Jim. Adams, he's going to hand it off to McArthur Lane on the sweep, and he is slammed down hard. Richard Wood. What a game he's playing today for Tampa Bay. Why watch 54 coming to your picture. And there's Richard Wood showing up late. What a tackle. That's a dream tackle. The kind of the kind of lumber you want to put on all those running backs, especially those linebackers, the way they're taught. Danny Reese was right in there too to help out. Kansas City kills the clock with 19 seconds to go. I don't figure that play if they expect to do something. That running might, a little power sweep. That might give us our answer for what's going to happen in the second half. I don't think they're going to get away, go away from that wing tee. I think they're going to continue running the football. Marv Levy says that he. Uh, Believes very much in the formation. He believes he can move the football and he's not going to panic. No one gets worried if they don't move the ball because they know if they're not moving at this quarter, they're going to move it next quarter. So I think you're right, Roman. Tony Adams, number 11. I wonder if that's like saying if you're down by 40, that the next quarter you're going to score 40 points. On the sweep right, it is Reed, and Reed isn't doing well either. Drop behind the line for a loss. Some of the chief fans beginning to boo a little bit now. Dave Lewis shutting down. They're going to let the clock run out here, and that'll be the final play of the first half. So Tampa Bay comes from behind on the passing arm of Doug Williams to take the lead. And that's the end of the first half. The score here in Kansas City, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 10, the Kansas City Chiefs 3. down the street, you're going to see weeds. When you look at someone's feet, you're going to see weeds. In the cold and in the heat, in a waving field of wheat, 
You're going to see weeds. You're going to see weeds. You're going to see weeds. Weeds from floor shine. They're popping up everywhere. I always thought my first trip home would feel just like a dream. But I can't shake the memories inside. If you join the people who've joined the Army, you'll become part of something that becomes a big part of you. Strength and satisfaction and the help of friends who care. Their memories, they're yours to keep. They're mine to keep and share. Broadway star Shelley Bruce for Color Track by RCA. As our Fanny, my curls are auburn, my dress is bright red, and my dog is Sandy Brown. If these colors don't look right, see the 1979 Color Track. Getting the color right is what it's all about. And now, with channel lock tuning, it tracks the color more automatically than ever. Before you see the color, the Color Track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. <laughs> The upsets, the comebacks, the heartbreakers, the record breakers. These are the moments that make sports spectacular. And this is where they happen. CBS Sports Spectacular. Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents the world's strongest men competition. The Jockey Club Gold Cup race with affirmed and Seattle slew expected to compete. Plus, highlights of the USTA Women's Indoor Championships. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. On a beautiful day in Kansas City, the strong right arm of Doug Williams, 8 out of 17 for 143 yards in the first half, has put Tampa Bay into a seven-point lead, 10 to 3 over the Kansas City Chiefs. Now let's join Brent Musburger and Irv Cross in New York who have some interesting thoughts on last Monday night's Dallas-Washington game. Coming up later today on CBS, the doubleheader game and the contest most of you will be watching matches the New York Giants against the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to take you back to last Monday night. The Cowboys were the first in goal on the Washington Redskin two-yard line. And Irv, many football men still can't believe the three-play off-tackle sequence. Well, you, when you're down here on a goal line defense, Brent, what'll happen is that the defensive line will pinch to the inside. Now watch them collapse there. Cowboys missed on that play. And the way the Redskins play their defense, the defensive tackles and ends pinch to the inside, and the middle linebacker, McClinton, is responsible for the off-tackle play. Watch the reaction here. Roger Staubach will give it to Tony Dorsett. Now, third down. Roger, one of the better rolling out quarterbacks in the league, but he didn't put any pressure on the outside in this sequence. It's easy to second guess, but I was certain they would run some kind of a rollout here, fake the off-tackle play, and have Staubach have an option to run or throw. They don't. They run off-tackle, and the Redskins stop them. So right now, not the Dallas Cowboys that we watched dismantle Denver down in New Orleans in the Super Bowl. They were full of imagination that afternoon. Well, I, I, I found it hard to believe they were that conservative. You know, they needed that win desperately. They lost it, and you know, hopefully they'll get it back Thanksgiving Day. Who knows? As time was running out, they had a chance to pull it out because of the reaction of Washington quarterback Joe Theismann. In his enthusiasm to proclaim victory, he holds the football up high going into the end zone. Brent, what people must remember here is the game is not over. Three seconds left on the clock, and the ball is snapped. Play remains alive until the play stops. Now, Seisman, under instruction to take a safety, goes back into the end zone, as he should. But watch how he handles the ball. <laughs> it's a trophy. Jeez. Now, he's hit here. If the ball falls in the end zone and the Cowboys recover it, they get a touchdown. And, of course, the next time that these two teams meet up will be on Thanksgiving afternoon. And I'm wondering, Irv, will the Cowboys remember what Theismann did to them at the end, try to show them up like that? Yes, they will remember. There's bad blood between these two ball clubs, and a play like that just gives them a little added extra incentive. All right. Thank you, Irv. And right now, let's send you back to the stadiums. We'll return to Arrowhead Stadium after this word from your local station. Don't miss the outrageous antics of the MASH unit. One half hour earlier than usual, tomorrow on CBS. Gee, I was brilliant today. Right. How about a beer and a few pointers on your game, huh? How about just a beer? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
as a tennis pro, people pay me a lot of money for pointers on their game. But I'll tell you what you want to know. Free. Really? Who's your cute friend? Don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains. Bush. Right now, your Gulf Coast Datsun dealer is making it easier than ever to buy a Datsun. Because right now, it's Datsun's end-of-the-year clearance sale. And no reasonable offer will be refused. All 78 Datsuns must go. Factory invoices have been slashed. Dealer markups all but eliminated. The time to buy is now while the selection is good. Come into your nearest Gulf Coast Datsun dealer. See the car named official car of the bucks. Make an offer. Make a deal on the 1978 Datsun of your choice. This is no mild-mannered real estate sign. It gives you more powerful advertising. Puts you in touch instantly with interested buyers all over the country. Enables you to become part of the first national home warranty program. It fights a never-ending battle to sell your home faster, easier. Electronic Realty Associates presents the super sign, ERA. All you need to know in real estate. WTVT Tampa St. Petersburg. WTVT Tampa St. Petersburg. And at Kansas City, as Tampa Bay enjoys a halftime lead of 10 to 3 over the Kansas City Chiefs, we're going to join Roman Gabriel and his special halftime guest. Roman? All right, we're fortunate today to have one that's a fine retired tight end out of the National Football League who now works with the Tampa Bay radio program and also with the Tampa Bay Buccaneer organization, Dave Kosurik. Dave, you've seen this team come a long way. Do they need any other things to make them a contender? Oh, yeah, they need some people. I think uh, some skilled people, although our receivers have been catching very well. Uh, I think a, a good uh, receiver with size and also uh, excellent speed would be a, a valued addition. Uh, that would be that would be one of them. Uh, there's a couple other spots. Uh, offensive line uh, may need a little solidification, but as you you know, Gabe, you sat behind enough of those offensive lines. These guys are giving Williams plenty of time, and he's keeping his backs in quite a bit. But uh, still, they haven't given him much heat. Well, I think you you came across the name that we're going to talk about a little bit too is Doug Williams out of Grambling. Uh, you've had quarterback problems in the past. A lot of guys have come in and out, but it seems now you have the quarterback in Williams, big, strong, powerful. What are, what are your comments about Doug Williams to this point in this season? Well, he's uh, he started a little late with us. He, he held out, uh, didn't come in early, and, and didn't take advantage of uh, early training. I think had he done that, he would have been much, much further advanced. But he's really, a, a, besides a great physical player, he's, he's a, a leader. Uh, the guys really respect him. They know that at any moment he can he can get him a score, and uh, they, they really play well for him, and they work exceptionally hard for Doug, and uh, he's taken the club, uh, and, and I think uh, the coaching staff have wisely fed him the stuff on a very gradual basis. They haven't rushed him, and uh, l somewhat limited, but uh, his performance is, is so far uh, the best percentage-wise. He threw for 311 yards last week against the Vikings, which is not not easy, and he's he seems to get better and better each week, and, and uh, I think uh, this is adding overall confidence to everybody. The, the offensive line knows if they hold that block just a second longer that he's going to get the ball to one of the receivers, and he's, he's shown it today. Well, I know you people, you were speaking of your offensive line. I know you made a trade to, with the Rams to get Greg Horton, who's now starting for you at the right guard position. Uh, is he doing a job for you? Yeah, he's doing a very fine job. In fact, he's moved Dan Medlin out, and uh, we got Greg when we had a little problem. Uh, uh, we lost Jeff Winans to the back problem, and uh, Jeff was put on injured injured waivers, and injured reserve, rather, and we were forced to get somebody, and we got Greg, and he was around for a little bit doing some special team work, and then all of a sudden they, they played him one game, and he's taken it over and he's done a fine job. Daryl Carl, our offensive tackle, we acquired from Miami, had a reputation of some problems and things that he's played extremely well for us and he's been a leader too on offense. All right, Dave, thank you for being our guest. Now, Jim, take it away, buddy. All right, thank you very much, Roman, and uh, also Dave Kosorek for joining us in here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're on top of the halftime by seven points on the last 30 second uh, touchdown pass from Doug Williams. on my mind I've got perhaps blue ribbon on my 
premium taste of Pabst. It's a lot to look forward to. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including installation? Oh, I'd say about $50. No, wait, $45. It'd be around $30. I guess about $40. The Illumini Sears muzzler is only $19.99. That's half of what I guessed. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? Is that really true? $19.99. That's a terrific price with installation included. Yes. That's something. Should have known it. Sears. The muzzler, only $19.99 installed. <laughs> only at Sears. That's my team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I'm Ricky Bell. Let me show you a special part of the Tampa Bay area. It's called Ybor City. This is where Jose Marti rallied a small band of Cuban exiles to fight for their country's freedom. Today, the old cigar factory is open again. The smell of Cuban food and the sound of Latin music fill the air. The street lights remind you of old Havana. Many children in the area come to the Ybor City Boys Club. It is funded by our United Way. There's a gym, a swimming pool. There's also a scholarship program. The scholarship started six years ago, and one of our kids is in medical school now, and there are more on the way. United Way works in the Tampa Bay area, and it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. And today in Kansas City, a beautiful day with the temperatures in the 70s, blue sky overhead. It is Tampa Bay out in front, 10 to 3. And there you see fans perched everywhere here, although it's far from being a sellout crowd. A good hand turnout on hand, over 38,000 in one of the most magnificent stadiums in the league. And speaking of the league, let's look at other scores. Pittsburgh bidding for their eighth straight win at home to stay undefeated or out ahead of Atlanta. 31 to nothing in that game at Pittsburgh. And Philadelphia trying to come back, but New England still holding the lead, 24 to 14, in a big game at Foxborough today, your old team. That's right, Jim. Redskins are coming back. Uh, Joe Theismann on the Gene Fugit uh, touchdown pass has put the Redskins back in the lead in the fourth quarter, 14-12, but that one's not over yet. New York Jets having a field day. Uh, I can't believe it. We need a little bit of that scoring here. 45 to 7. The Jets snapping the two-game losing streak with ease. Now the crucial game in the NFC Central. This is for first place. Green Bay is in it at the moment. Chicago's trying to catch them. The Packers are making the field goal stand up. It was kicked by Chester Marco. And out the half, they're still leading the Bears 3-0. Chicago's running to tough luck with two tough losses. And Baltimore in the frustration bowl at St. Louis with a 21-10 lead over the luckless and hapless St. Louis Cardinals of Bud Wilkinson. The Orleans uh, trying to give Sam Reticliano a welcome home, but uh, the Browns are out in front, 14-9 at the half. And here in Kansas City, Tampa Bay is out ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs, 10-3, and that's how things are going. And later you're going to see the Los Angeles Rams against the San Francisco 49ers. While in the first half, a very revealing uh, Roman Gabriel, how well Tampa Bay defense the rushing attack of Kansas City. I think so, Jim. It's just a case of the best defense versus the rush in the National Football League being one step ahead of the best offense as far as the rush is concerned in Kansas City. As you can see here, Tampa Bay has rushed for 37, Kansas City 57. The big edge is in passing, 140 yards for Tampa Bay, 41 yards for Kansas City. The best thing the Chiefs are doing right now is punting. Zeno Andresision is punting well. He's doing much better than he has in the past four games. 51.3 average. Maybe they can get a little bit of that pop in their offense in the second half. The interesting thing is the bottom figure there that Kansas City has controlled the ball seven over 17 minutes, Tampa Bay under 13 minutes, and that's been the story of the Chiefs all year. They've dominated the football game, but they've not been able to win. They've lost four in a row. That's the problem they're having, and with their young 
inexperienced defense, it's difficult for their defense to keep people from scoring, so they have to try to control the ball and score points, too. Now, very quickly, Roland, what do you look for here in the second half? Anything different? I would like to say I would see more passing from Kansas City, but I don't think so at this point. The score is only 10 to 3. The Chiefs probably will not abandon their game plan. Eddie Payton, a second-year player from Jackson State, number 34, is waiting at the goal line for the Chiefs. And back up field for Tampa Bay. We'll have kicking off Neil O'Donoghue. Number six, here's O'Donoghue's driving kick. He's put it to the end zone twice, but this time the Reese has the two of Payton. Over the 20, Payton the 25, and as he taken down hard, a jarring tackle by number 77, Bill Kohler, on the specialty team for Tampa Bay. So Kansas City will get it to start the second half and run away with Tampa Bay in the lead, 10 to 3. And there's Kohler, number 77. And what a bone-jarring tackle he carried downfield to put on Mr. Eddie Payton. Kohler is 250 pounds, and Payton must weigh about 180. <laughs> Probably feels like he weighs about 80 right now. First and 10 for the Chiefs at the 26. And the wing tee, they give it to Bailey, the fullback, and he's taken down by Pear right at the line of scrimmage. So Tampa Bay refusing again to give up any yardage here to this rushing attack of Kansas City's that has led the NFL in running this year. Pear is having a fine football game, moving left, right, pass rush, as we've seen in the first half. He's putting a lot of pressure on both the running and passing of Kansas City. And the Tampa Bay defense, both Jarris White, the left cornerback, and uh, is out for the game. And on the offense, John McKay also out. McKay with a bruised hand, White with a slight concussion. Second and 10, Kansas City at the 26. They come out of the wing tee. Tony Adams working up the middle, and he's hit his foul back to Carther Lane, but it'll not be a first down. He's calling the 31. Richard Wood is right there to cover him. The gain will be about six yards. Dewey Solomon was in there, too. And it'll bring up a third down play for Kansas City. Third and four at the 32-yard line. Oh, Adams came right out of the wing tee on second down and went to the pro set follow the same pattern they have through most of the year thus far, throwing to the backs. Third down pass again, he goes to his back, Belton has got it, and Horace Belton brings him down. Mark Bailey and Horace Belton were both there, and it was caught by Belton. Cecil Johnson, number 56, couldn't have played that any better. Adams just laid the ball in about as perfect as you ever will see a throw put to a back. And look to this. The Lions have come back to regain the lead on the Redskins. Remember, Washington undefeated had a two-game lead in the NFC East over the Cowboys and the others. And right now, the Lions are bidding for the upset of the weekend. Rick Kane on a five-yard run to put the Lions ahead, 19-14. Down play for Kansas City. Looked like something went wrong, but Adams now has it. Adams down the right side. Trying to go to Tony Reed. It's incomplete around the Tampa Bay 45. And Adams got some pretty good pressure that time from the Buccaneers. There was a play action where we'd been speaking about in the first half, but that action took a little bit too long. 73 Hannah was in there to make the play, as we can see here. Adams is waiting for the receiver to clear, but he just doesn't have quite enough time to set up to let the ball go. That'll bring up second down and 10 now for Kansas City at the Chiefs 37. Tampa Bay leads 10 to 3. This is Jim Thacker with Roman Gabriel today from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Two wide receivers this time. They're out of the wing tee. Play action fake. And a big chase by Dewey Salmon. Scrambling is Adams, and Adams is taken down at about the line of scrimmage. Dave Lewis and Dewey Selman in hot pursuit of Adams. That's too bad there, Jim. Adams had what he was looking for, but he was pressured out of the pocket. He had his uh, wide receiver to the right, right open on a curl pattern versus man coverage, but he just didn't have the time to throw the ball. And another one of those fine young linebackers for Tampa Bay, Dave Lewis. Uh, too much heat on Adams for him to get off the pass, and it's third down and 10 for the Chiefs at the 37-yard line. Might have picked up a half yard on the play, but not, not much more. Now Larry Dorsey.
Dorsey has come in replacing Ted McKnight. That put Dorsey wide to the left. Marshall wide to the right. Third down play. Pressure again on Adams. Penalty flag thrown. Adams is taken down by Le Leroy Selman. But a flag is thrown in the backfield, which might indicate holding. And Tampa Bay has stopped the play. Whale short of the first down. Personal foul against Kansas City. That's the preliminary signal. You know, and Adams was taken out of the 40, which has been way short of a first down. You know, Jim, it's difficult to say whether the offensive linemen for the Chiefs are pass blocking well or not. Personal foul, number 70, offense refused, fourth down. Because when you run the football as much as the Chiefs do, and then all of a sudden you start trying to pass, it's difficult for those offensive linemen to stand up and pass block. Personal foul was against Jim Nicholson, the right tackle. And it's declined by Tampa Bay, so there's Zinnan Andresishan out of Canada. Seven years, a punter in the Canadian Football League and the leading kicker in the Canadian Football League a year ago. It was an injured player on the field, looked like was number 70, Nicholson, who was charged with a personal foul. Danny Reese now has returned to deep uh, safety for Tampa Bay. As Nicholson comes off and recession waits, Kansas City will go with the ball. Tampa Bay will get it here early in the third quarter, leading 10-3. Get away! Ooh, good rush put in there by Cesar, and wow, nice kick by Andrusician. Out of bounds inside the 20. They're going to spot it at about the 17-yard line. Cesar putting on good heat that time, but Andrusician got it away. It'll be Tampa Bay's ball when we come back. First and 10 inside the 20. Are we going to be the Bowman Champs tonight? Yeah. Are we having a problem? Yeah. Did I forget my press stone? Yeah. Take out the Bowman. Put in the two. Put in the press stone. Press stone two. Protect against freeze-ups and corrosion. Take out old, weak antifreeze and put in America's most trusted antifreeze, Prestone 2. Take out the old, put in the two. Put in the Prestone, Prestone 2. And when you flush your cooling system, use Prestone Super Flush. When do you sing? But wiser. Whenever the moment is right for a great beer. When do you sing? Whenever the good times are moving to right here After the work is done, while you're still having fun The king of beers is waiting for your call When you say Budweiser You said it all Tampa Bay will start from inside its 20. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Another fine punt by Andrew Sisson. Straight down up, up the middle comes to Bowles, running hard over the 25. Dave Rosemack pulls him down, but a nifty gain on the play by Jimmy Dubose, having a good day in the backfield for Tampa Bay. But Andrew Sitchin's punting has been the outstanding feature for Kansas City. He's averaged almost 50 yards a punt for five kicks. He's had three of them over 50, one for 58. That'll be a first down for Tampa Bay at the 29. There he is. Looks like he spilled the alphabet soup and scooped it up with both hands. <laughs> Mark a wide to the left. Morris Owens comes in motion. They flip it to DuBose. Gets a good block. Cuts back inside of the 35 to the 40. Art still went back to pull him down. A nice block in there by Lewis Carter. Sprung him out of the backfield. Another good gain. Another first down for Tampa Bay. And now they're beginning to roll on the ground. They sure are, uh, Jim. Tampa Bay keeps using their outside receiver in motion. They haven't done anything with him yet, but I would expect to see him become an integral part of the offense sometime soon in this game. Johnny Davis has committed fullback now, replacing DuBose. As Davis and Carter behind Williams. They give it to Carter up the middle, driving close to the 45. Gain of about three or four, maybe. Gary Spaney made the stop with Don Parrish. Well, Atlanta finally got on the boards, Gabe. Atlanta 7, Pittsburgh 31. An 11-yard pass from Bartkowski to Wallace Francis in the, in the fourth quarter. Well, the Steelers, though, are having a great start. It'll be their ninth consecutive win at home. This is the best start they've ever had, and they're going to be tough to catch. Second down and six. 
DeBose back in there trying to cut back penalty flag thrown as DeBose drives it up close to a first down marker. But the handkerchief went down, so let's hold up. And it's against Tampa Bay. That's the early signal. Clarence Sanders on the stop for Kansas City. And this play will be called back. Officials here today, referee is Gene Barth. The others are Joe Connell, Jerry Bergman, Bob McLaughlin, Ben Tompkins, Dean Look, and Fritz Graff. Number 74, offensive holding, second down. 74 is Rocky Freitas. Daryl Carlton was not feeling 100% today. He's having a bout with some uh, flu bug. So Rocky Freitas picked up in the trade, is in there, playing at right tackle, was caught for holding. Second down play, they run the draw play to DuBose. DuBose to the 40, gets back the yardage lost on the penalty. Dave Rosemuck hitting down there. Was spotted about the 41. Not a bad call in this situation. You don't have to, when you have second and 14 or 15, you don't have to get it all back in one chunk. Draw play is a good call here. There's Rosemuck, 55, making a fine stop. That'll bring up a third down call now for Doug Williams, who's having a pretty good afternoon in passing. It's up around the 150-yard mark. Williams needs nine. Off on the flat to Carter. Penalty flag thrown as Carter stopped uh, for just about no gain by Dave Lindstrom. Penalty marker thrown. They got holding on Tampa Bay. Probably be refused by Kansas City. Bring up a fourth down play. Here's Another a report from New York. Here's a final. New York Jets 45, Buffalo 14. My Is that old, a final? That's a final, Jim. My old pal Bill Munson came in at quarterback to hit Bob Chandler for Buffalo's final score. So they're coming back, right? That's it. That's <laughs> it. Come back into short. Fourth down, punting play. Dave Green out for Tampa Bay. He's the third leading punter in the National Conference, averaging 42 and a half today, and he's been out punted today by Andrew Sisson. Eddie Payton is waiting for the Chiefs. Good rush by the Chiefs, and Green gets away a low drive. This one could be returned. Payton scoops up the 20, 25. Hello. There go four penalty flags down as Payton is spun down on the 26 after a short return. And a possible penalty on this play. I don't think there was any question on that call. Everybody threw their flag. A clip against Kansas City, and half the distance here will take it back inside the 15-yard line. So the Chiefs are going to have a long way to go again. Tampa Bay leads by 10 to 3, with 8:50 to go in the third period today from Kansas City. Well, let's listen to Gene Barth again. Personal foul. Clipping number 52 on the run back. First down. Thomas Howard was spotted on the clip by just about everybody that had a flag. And Kansas City now will be taking over from deep in its territory here when we come back at its own 12. Oh, no! My birthday's early. Whew. You sure didn't spend any time getting dressed. Maybe he'd look better in Hager slacks. Or Hager sport coat and slacks. He could even afford a Hager vested suit. And that's a look I can't afford to pass up. Oh. Hi. Susan? Close enough. For me, Hager, thanks. because looking good makes you feel good. Ready or not, here I come. Look, out on the road. It's a car. It's a Fiesta. It's Wonder Car. Ford Fiesta from Germany. With front wheel drive and Michelin steel belted radials for sure footed traction. Fiesta, Wunder Car, with responsive acceleration that's quick to the rescue. Fiesta, Wunder Car, ready to go long distances on a gallon of gas. Wunder Car, disguised as a Fiesta. I like it, Clark. So do I, Lois. At your Ford dealer. Sir, you hate this showing. At the Kansas City Chiefs, 12-yard line, first and 10. is Reed and the give is to Reed running to the strong side off tackle over the 15 gains about three on the play Tampa Bay defense has been pretty stingy today and they've met the challenge up to this point 
against the NFL's top running ball club, Kansas City. Field position hasn't been too good for the Chiefs, and when you're running the kind of offense they are, you need good field position. Good point, uh, Gabe. Here's Tony Adams now, his first start this year, facing second down and six. Give it to the fullback, and stacked up is Bailey for no gain. So the middle of the Tampa Bay defense really toughened that time. Well, down in the bottom of the trenches, 61 is Dewey Selman. Certain to be an all-pro linebacker before too long as his brother Leroy Selman. If he isn't pro ball material, I don't know who it would be. And that guy right over the center again was in there, Dave Pear. What a, what a player. I tell you, the front seven for Tampa Bay, Hanna, Pear, Leroy, Dewey, Dave Lewis, Richard Wood and Cecil Johnson. That's a pretty tough combination on the heart of the defense. Third down, Adams chased out of the pocket, fires incomplete. Trying to hit his tall, lanky Henry Marshall, wide receiver over the middle. Incomplete at the 25. That brings on fourth down. Kansas City unable to move again. Once more, the Tampa Bay defense has held, and they'll take over. And again, Mr. Andrew Sishon is having quite a day, averaging 49.2 yards a punt. That would just be leading the National Football League by about a half mile if he had that for the year. It's difficult to pass when you're throwing on third down, third and 10, third and 15 all game long, especially, too, when you're running from a wing tee offense. Another good punt. Take him a reason. At the 40. He's looking for some room. Here come the red shirts, and he'll get nowhere. No help to be found for Reese, and he's snowed under the 44. Oh, Reese looked like he just turned the corner and ran into some cops. It looked like Canadian football, Jim. Well, you'll see Reese's problem here as we leave, and Tampa Bay leading 10-3. New Schlitz Light. There's a new taste in Schlitz Light. The taste of natural ingredients brewed into a Pilsner beer. New Schlitz Light. Still less filling with a taste that's bigger than light. Gentlemen, here's to fast horses. Schlitz Light and those who love them. Schlitz Light. Natural Pilsner beer. Take care of the pennies. And the dollars will take care of themselves. You should be healthy, wealthy, and wise. With money as tight as it is, more people are coming to Sunoco's Penny Pinching Pump for $1.90. The quality gas that sells below our regular. And $2.20, it sells below our premium. And most cars that run on regular or premium can use them. So come to Sunoco's Penny Pinching Pump. Don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. Because a penny saved is truly a penny earned. If you think some of today's passes have been exciting, wait till you see the plays made for me on WKRP in Cincinnati. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. About midway in the third period at Kansas City, Tampa Bay holding its lead, and here is late word from Lambeau Field. Look at the Packers going to pick up. Up the middle, Don Parrish makes the stop on... Uh, Don, Jimmy DuBose, short gain. That'd be a big win for Bart Starr's Packers if they take that one. Uh, and what a start they could probably say then, Roman, that the pack is back. I think so, Jim. Green Bay 10, Chicago nothing. Middleton, a two-yard run. The pack could be back. Bears needed that one just to get back even. That would give them a two-game lead on them. Second down play, Williams, hands up the backfield to DuBose. Penalty flags are thrown again. DuBose trying to find some running room off the right side. There was uh, Whitney Paul there, along with Thomas Howard, converging to make the stop with Sylvester Hicks, number 75, the bottom of the step. Trying to run a trap with number 78, Schumacher trapping the right side, but nowhere to trap. Number 86, offense, offside, refused, third down. Tight end Jim Obradovich either jumped or lined up offsides. Kansas City said we'll take the down. That brings up third down and six at the 48. Lions 19, Lions 19, Redskins 21. Joe Theismann to John McDaniels for 25 yards. Why has Theismann done a job this year for the Redskins? He sure has. 
third down play for Williams. Bootleg keep by Williams. Oh, he didn't fool one man, though. That's Whitney Paul, the veteran. Paul was smelled that play and had it stopped. Williams with some good faking, but Paul, the veteran, watch him react. Good fake in there by Williams, but it's difficult again to, to fool these linebackers because their key almost sends you right to the quarterback after the quarterback makes his fake. Well, Whitney Paul, we told you this is his birthday. He's 25 years old today. He was a down lineman, a defensive end last year, converted to linebacker this year, so he's used to containing those type plays. Fourth down, Dave Green, the punt from Tampa Bay. Gets it away. Coming up is... Eddie Payton to let it down. It'll be killed here by Tampa Bay. Grabbing it was Brett Mortz. Kansas City will have it at its own 25-yard line. The Chiefs are trailing the Buccaneers by a touchdown. It's 10-3 with six minutes to go in the third quarter. <laughs> you know me? Of course you do. I am money. Your money. You work for me. So hard. <laughs> What's so funny? You should have me working for you. <laughs> An IDS representative can get tough with money. Put it to work with a personalized financial plan. We've done it for 80 years for business and for people just like you. IDS. We help people manage money. Come fly with me. Magnificent flying machine, the 79 Thunderbird. I love its luxurious cockpit. Fly with a V8 engine. Power steering and power brakes all standard. Glide in great style with wrap over roof and opera windows at a down to earth sticker price. 79 Thunderbird. What a way to fly at your four dealers. <laughs> Well, uh, not much to cheer about thus far for the Chiefs, but they have a chance now. They're trailing by seven points. As they took over, back on their own point. We'll have some injury reports to give you here in a minute. Dance at his ball. Green, Lane, and McKnight in the backfield. They hand it off to McKnight. Looking through over the 30, 35. That's twice that Ted McKnight has almost broken free today for Kansas City. Had one wiped out by penalty, a long run. But this one's good for almost 10 yards. There's here's, the final. Here's a final. Atlanta 7, Pittsburgh 31. On that last play, number 65, Tom Condon came around the left side on the trap from his right guard position and opened up a hole there for number 22, Ted McKnight. Tampa Bay players shaken up, which gives us a chance to tell you that Gary Green, the left corner linebacker for Kansas City, and the right offensive tackle Jim Nicholson, both are lost for the remainder of this game. And number seven, Zinnan Andresishan, has been a stick out today for the Chiefs with some excellent punting, averaging almost 50 yards a kick. Here's an update, Baltimore 21, St. Louis 17, third quarter. Boy, Marv Levy's trying to get some fire into his team. Either that, he wants to talk to one of the officials. But uh, Levy esteemed about something. He's a brilliant guy. You know, he was a Phi Beta Kappa. At this was argument is over where the ball should be put he, and Marv Levy I think is protesting that it was put down in one place and then changed to another and Kansas City might have had a first down but I told you that Marv was a smart guy and he proved it he said I'm not going to argue with you right that's right you Jimmy. never win that argument he's also had a lot of fire for a lot of years I remember him when he came in with George Allen in 66 to help coach the Rams he handled our special teams and he's quite a guy well, he also coached your team, the Eagles, and the Redskins. He was with the Eagles before I came. Well, there's Green Bay is piling it up now. 17-0. They have scored again. That gives them a pretty commanding lead over the Bears in what was a critical game in the Central Division of the NFC. Steve Luke, an interception, 63-yard return for that last score. 
Picked up one of Avellini's, evidently. Now Kansas City, second down and just about a foot to go for a first down. They give it to MacArthur Lane, and he's trapped behind the line, and he struggles forward, and I think he got the first down. Good individual effort by MacArthur. Good Cecil in. Johnson hit him. That looked like he'd be thrown for a loss. Never gave up. Good effort, Jim, but not a good choice. When you only have about a half an inch, he could have cut it up a lot sooner. You hit straight ahead, right? Right. Get that inch. They got it. It's first down for Kansas City. The Royals trying to whoop it up a little bit here. The uh, Chiefs still thinking about the Royals, who were beaten last time by the Yankees. Quick snap. McKnight coming left. Tripped up. No gain. Good defense again by the Buccaneers. Number 33, Mark Cotney, the strong safety, was the key man on that play. He came up the line of scrimmage and met it perfectly. Well, they always say when you have success with a running play, come back to it, and that time the Chiefs did, but the Buccaneers were there to stop it. Cotney's always been very strong against the run. They picked him up in the expansion draft from Houston, uh, so he was one of the original players they took to start this franchise. Second and ten. Breaking his read, there's his speed over the 40. Still fighting to the 45. The toughest run yet by Tony Reed today. And it may be a first down for the Chiefs. Bill Kohler on the stop. There it is, the same play to the right side, pulling the left guard, Bob Simmons, number 73. But Reed, with his running ability, makes this play happen. Well, that was a shoot up the town run by Reed. That's the strongest run he's made today, and it is a first down for Kansas City. The Chiefs now with their best-looking drive going thus far in the game. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third period. They give it again to Reed. The right side, Reed fighting for the 50, but stopped just short of it by Richard Wood. Number 32. Oh, he has become fired up. Yeah, he's ready to go. Same play again. Exact duplicate. Come back. Redskins held on and a squeaker today to remain undefeated. The Redskins' best start since 1940 for that team. And in strong position in the NFC East. Ahead of the Cowboys by a couple of games. Second down and six. Ball right at the 50. Farther lane coming wide. Hit. Gets away right into the arms of Mike Washington. He goes, and a big bear hug tackle takes him down. Not Richard Wood in there. Richard Wood slowed him down. Our, our friend Richard Wood is having quite a game, too. There's the quickness of those four linebackers operating. Richard Wood working on the inside, and that uh, lets the cornerback come up. There it is, just a slant play. McCarthy Lane trying to get outside. Nowhere to go. Looks like... <laughs> Looks like some fresh food there. Looks like Tony Reed might have missed his block on Mike Washington, too. Third down and four. Here's a big play for the Chiefs who have been marching. Third down pass, little out pattern by Marshall. He's got it for first down, out of bounds on the 45. Just a quick out to Henry Marshall. Good call. Kansas City's drive is still alive. There's the experience of a quarterback showing there. He noticed it as they had coverage, double coverage on his wide side, and he came back to Marshall on the weak side for the first down. Well, that's the most concerted drive that Kansas City has had by far. Three first downs in a row. They've marched now into Tampa Bay territory, and they're threatening here to pull even. At the Buccaneers 44, it's a first down. Still a long way to go, but the Chiefs have come a long way. Difficult thing in these kind of situations, too, is whenever you're moving the ball on the ground, it's a long way to go without making a mistake. That's Tony Reed in the tailback, McKnight over on the wing, and the give us the fullback, MacArthur Lane. Hitting behind his right tackle, Tom Condon, Richard Wood pulls him down. Short gain. They'll spot it on the 43, gain of a yard, second down and nine. Now a new play brought in by Arnold Morgado. Number 21 is checked in the backfield. He's a free agent who went undrafted from uh, Hawaii. And now he's brought the play in from our league. That's Morgado on the tailback. And to the left side is Tony Reed on the wing. Motion Reed, they give it a read on the sweep. Read the 40. Reed driving hard to the 20, 35 yard line. He is down close to that first down marker. Maybe
be just short. Dewey Sullivan at the stop. It'll bring up third down and two. How would you like to be that left linebacker, Dave Lewis? They must have had four guys coming around in front of Green on that play. Nothing but red shirts. Coming up, uh, more football action. New York Giants versus the Dallas Cowboys, who now must uh, match the win of the uh, Washington Redskins. I don't know whether I'd want to be the Giants today or not. Here's a big play for Kansas City, third and two. On the play action, downfield, Marshall's got it, first down out on the 21. It was Walter White, the tight end, not Marshall. Complete to the tight end. Well, here's that play action pass. One one receiver downfield. I don't know whether sending one guy down is that smart or not, but they made it work. If the one person's not open, you're stuck with the football. Well, it's been a good looking drive here by Kansas City. The Chiefs are marching downfield and are now at the Tampa Bay 21. This has been the biggest assault they've put up against the Tampa Bay defense today. Out on the wing to the right goes Ted McKnight. The tailback is Tony Reed. Wing T formation for Kansas City. Something new. Up the middle, MacArthur Lane. Drive to the 16. Picks up about five. Dave Pear is there to pull him down with Dewey Selman. But that's the end of the third quarter. So the third period is over. The score, Tampa Bay 10, Kansas City 3. We now pause for a word from your local station. Sorry to bust up the game, fellas, but I thought you might like my address and my number. WKRP in Cincinnati, tomorrow at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. 13, Tampa, St. Petersburg. Tampa Bay's in the lead, but Kansas City is fighting back now. They're threatening here with a first down at the Buccaneers' 15-yard line. Tony Adams picked up a passing attack, is now 9 out of 16 for 75 yards. And Tony Reed now running with more authority here in the third period. One yards thus far. This team runs uh, for more yardage than the other team in pro football, and Tampa Bay held them off for better than a half, but now they're catching fire. Here comes Reed off the wing, pounding into the strong side to about the 12. Richard Wood was the man on the key, the attack with Curtis Jordan. Jordan came up from his safety spot. You know what Wood's doing? Wood is playing on the weak side of that wing T, and when the tailback, in that case, Tony Reed starts to the right side, I think Wood is moving with him. That's why he's making so many tackles. Well, here's a third down play now. This uh, is a big one. Third and about a yard at the 12. 54 is Richard Wood. There's the Tampa defense. And about a seven-man front with those linebackers in the gaps. And they give it to him. Stop on Reed. It was Dave Lewis who went in there hard and stopped Reed in the backfield for a loss. They stopped him from the first down, and now Kansas City's got to make a decision. It's fourth down coming up, and Stenerud's coming on the field. They had they had nobody blocking Lewis. There was a mix-up there on the assignment. Somebody was supposed to block Lewis, and no one did. And number three, Jan Stenerud and Marv Levy's decided to get these points here. Still third period, remember. Oh, it's still early, rather. It's just the start of the fourth period. Just under 14 minutes, so lots of time to go. Stenerud to try and make it 10 to 6, and he does. Oh, the second field goal of the day by Jan Stenerud, the veteran. And Kansas City has cut the lead down to four. Tampa Bay now in the lead by a score of 10 to 6. And most of the fourth quarter still ahead of us today in Kansas City. Sears National Automotive Sale. After 40,000 highway miles, then the 2,000-mile Pony Express route, a set of Sears Road Handler radials exceeded federal safety standards for new tires. Now save $42 to $74 a set, our largest savings of the year. The shock absorber... Chiefs are back in the ball game. 10 to 6 the score with lots of time to go here. We're early in the fourth period. And now Kansas City will kick off. It'll be Anderson. And George Ragsdale will wait deep for Tampa Bay. High kick. And it goes by Carter. There is a mix-up by the safety man of Tampa Bay. Carter and Ragsdale. 
were indecisive about who would take the kickoff it right between them and into the end zone for the touchback. They're lucky that ball bounded forward. They sure are, Jim. That's a case of you take it, I'll take it, you take it, and nobody takes it. Good thing it went out of the end zone. They might have lost it. Uh, kickoff sometimes can crazily bounce, and that one, fortunately for Tampa Bay, went straight ahead. Well, there's the ball control game Kansas City likes. They kept it seven minutes and 23 seconds to go 62 yards for the field goal. It's now 10-6. Tampa Bay is still leading. Jimmy DeBose, a workhorse today for the Buccaneers to the 24. Gains about four on the play. Don Parrish and Dave Rosamick for Kansas City on the stop. I don't think Tampa Bay is going to come out throwing. They have two tight ends in the game now, both Giles and Obradovich. I think maybe they might just try to run the clock down, keep the football, make a few. No, there goes Obradovich out now. They put in a pass receiver. It is Larry Mucker. He comes wide to the left side. And off to the right is Morris Owens. And the flip is to DeBose. DeBose cuts back. Stopped on the 29, about a yard short of a first down. Here's a final. New England 24. Uh, my Eagles only 14. New England's coming back hard. They got, uh, they've got. they had some unfortunate uh, luck this year. Tragic accident to Stingley. And uh, Baltimore. Uh, looks like St. Louis may have scored again. But... There's a case where a win is a win for either of these teams. That's right. They both, they both need a win. Third and a yard for Tampa Bay. Their defense was on the field a long time. They need this first down. Will it be DeBose? It is. DeBose driving. Did he make it? That's going to be close. You know, Jim, actually looking at Tampa Bay short yardage formation, it's almost the same thing as a wing tee. Most of the clubs around the league bring everybody in close to flank in close on short yardage situations. And what Kansas City has done is just taken it and they use it the whole game. Well, as you saw, they got the first down. So it was a key run for DeBose right in the middle. It's just a case of blowing people back and that's what happened. Mass movement. First and ten for the Buccaneers. DeBose now has picked up 64 yards. He's Tampa Bay's leading rusher today. Ricky Bell's gained only 14. He's out of there right now. Carter is running at the halfback. Uh, give to DeBose. Penalty flag thrown. DeBose on a counter going back against the green. Moves to maybe the 34. The red penalty flag thrown. Holding flash against Tampa Bay. This will cost the Buccaneers. And you get into first and long yardage situations. And with a young ball club, that's a dangerous uh, circumstance. Let's listen. Number 75, offense, holding, first down. Dave Revis, the left tackle, spotted for holding. You know what Tampa's doing? They're going to blow Kansas City to sleep and go on top for a quick score. Okay. I'm going to remember that. some blocks up to the 25. That play there is almost like a run. A little quick screen pass. Get a couple of linemen out in front of your back. Try to make some yardage. That's a high percentage pass. Dave Rosemuck and Jeff Lloyd on the stop for Kansas City. It'll be second down at 15. The Chiefs are keeping Tampa Bay here in a bad yardage situation. Second and long. Second and 15. Williams has had a pretty good day passing. We had him unofficially nine for 18 for 148 yards. Not quite up to his record performance of last week, however. Draw play, gives to Carter. Carter squirming, fighting, stopped short of the 30. Tim Gray in there from safety. With a couple of teammates and they stop. Lewis Carter. Four-year veteran from the University of Maryland. Spent his rookie year with the Oakland Raiders. Pat Hayden to John Capaletti, the Rams, seven, San Francisco, nothing. Oh, that's quick scoring out there. That game hasn't been underway too long. Ricky Odom has checked in. Dave Rosemick comes out. So a nickel defense is on the field now for Kansas City. They've come in with a fifth defensive back on third and 11, looking for the pass from Doug Williams. Williams fires. He's got Mucker there at the 40 for a first down, and he is 
spilled at the 30, 49, but it's a first down for Tampa Bay. Little drop back pass, looking for his slot man. He just threw the ball right through number 26, Barbaro's hands. That's what you call stuff on the football. That's a pretty nifty catch by Mucker with that ball being tipped. Sure was. That's good concentration, the kind of thing that uh, it's hard to teach a young football team. Well, it was a big play for Tampa Bay. It gives them a first down now at the 49-yard line. The Bows and the Kansas City Territory down on the 48. Gain of about three. Fine play by Howard, the right linebacker for Kansas City, coming in there to knock down the, the uh, uh, interference. Number 52. There he is right there. And there's 18 Emma Thomas, the old guy on the Kansas City team making the tackle. He's only 35 in his 35th summer. He is Emmett Thomas. He is uh, one of the players, he and uh, Stenaru, that played on both of the Super Bowl games here for Kansas City. Second down play, Lewis Carter, the middle, oh, inside the 35. Kansas City defense now pushed back uh, slightly. Sylvester Hicks is number 75. Outstanding rookie defensive end for the Chiefs and Dave Roseman. You know, Jim, I can see some football players, 35-year-old, playing the games, especially quarterbacks, but a defensive back at 35 years old still in the game and doing as well as he is, that's something else. That is, and uh, doing it in fine fashion, as we told you, he has set a new record this year for the Chiefs with his 58th career interception. Big play, third down. Williams fires, and he is hit Owens inside the 35 for a first down. Gary Barber on the stop, but Morris Owens made the stop, and nice reaction by Doug Williams rolling out of the pocket on pressure. Let's see how All this right. player with Thomas was shaken up here. Thomas has to come across the field with number 85, Morris Owens, who was in the slot going in motion. There's Thomas coming up to make the tackle on Owens. Just had a little collision, it looked like. Yeah, looks like he might have twisted his ankle there a bit. Well, that's Emmett Thomas down. He leads all active uh, interceptors in the National Football League with 58. The all-time record, of course, is 79. Emlyn Tumell, I don't know whether Paul Krause has intercepted one or not, but he has 78. The Bucks finally, finally used that slot man. All right, Tampa Bay is marching back. It's 10 to 6. The Buccaneers looking for more points. Want to drop your car off fast? Nobody does it better. Hertz leads the others by far. Use Hertz Express Car Return. You will find it everywhere. And at busier airports, Hertz people can meet you right at your car to help you return it even faster. I don't have to go to the counter? Just catch your plane. So rent a Fairmont, LTD, or other fine car fast from Hertz. Hertz is a superstar. On American Airlines, you get what you pay for. As a full fare passenger, only you can select a seat when you make your reservation. You can select seats for your whole trip, including connections and your flight back home. And you can get all your boarding passes at once to avoid all those lines. On American, you finally get the full fare treatment you deserve. You get what you pay for. We're American And Emma Thomas being helped a little bit in the field, but uh, I think he's okay. He was shaken up. Ricky Odom has replaced Thomas at right corner linebacker. There's Williams day. 12 completions, 175 yards. First down play, DuBose. Good blocking up ahead by his teammates as DuBose powers inside the 30. Dave Lindstrom makes the stop for Kansas City. Another nice game for the Buccaneers as they get it down to the 28-yard line. Green Bay, Chicago's finally scored, Gabe. Yeah, Green Bay 17, Chicago 7, Avellini to James Scott on the 15-yard pass. They must be uh, about midway, though, in the fourth period of their time running out for the Bears. Second and five here for Tampa Bay. Carter cuts back inside the 25, and he is pounded back hard, and there goes the penalty flag again. Another penalty flag thrown. Lewis
Travis Carter cutting back. They've spotted holding on the Buccaneers, and that'll push them back. Tough break for Tampa Bay because they had almost another first down inside the 25-yard line. Instead, this will be 10 yards back upfield, and it'll come back to the 38. Offense holding, second down. Ten-yard penalty puts the ball back to the Kansas City 38. And it'll be second down there and 15. Oh, Williams is having a pretty good day. Doing a good job. Doing a good job with the Tampa offense. Now he puts both wide receivers, Owens and Mucker, to the left. Mucker on the outside, Owens in the slot. And he's going to roll to that side. There goes the deep one. He is going to Owens, and an interference going to be called right around the end zone. Owens was streaking free. You could see he was beating the deep man, Tim Cobb, here, and the penalty flag thrown. Now, let's just be sure who will be charged with the interference. Here he comes out to his left side. He has uh, both receivers singled up in the slot, one going to the corner, and that's who he's aiming here for. There we see the pass interference, I think. To, who is that? Uh, well, it was uh, number Defensive 30. Defensive pass interference, this, number 38, first down. It was Ricky Odom, uh, Gabriel, who had just replaced the injured Emma Thomas. Unfortunate for Ricky to be in, caught in that spot at the time, but there you saw the speed of Morris Owens would set that up. Smart football, Ricky Odoms is a rookie. They went right after the new guy. A golden chance for another touchdown here. First and goal from the one-yard line. They get it to DuBose, and he scores. Jimmy DuBose packs over from the one-yard line. Tampa Bay has its first rushing touchdown today. Look at it again. Look at the left side of that offensive line. There's uh, Rebus, number 75, does a fine job in there. Obradovich to tight end. Rebus gives that Tampa offensive line some, some kind of experience because he played with the Steelers when the Steelers won two world championships. So that's the kind of experience you can grow with. Well, you can see also that was a pretty good leap by Jimmy DuBose. You understand why he was the second player ever drafted by John McKay in building this backfield. The point try is up by O'Donoghue, and it's outside wide to the left. So that leaves the score. Tampa Bay 16. And Kansas City six, which means a field goal and a touchdown now could still tie it with over seven minutes to go in the ball game. But a little more insurance here by the Buccaneers who have scored. And Kansas City and a very pretty cheap looking on as the kickoff here by Tampa Bay. Taken by one of the up end, the blockers over the 35 yard line. The returner is Ed Beckman, and he gets it out close to the 40, stopped around the 38. So they did not kick the ball deep to the fast Eddie Payton. This guy O'Donohue kicks like I putt. Every kick's on the ground and rolling left to right, not straight for the cup. I don't understand what they're doing. Like maybe they're trying to keep the ball away. Roman, let me ask you about this figure. Six minutes and 28 seconds. That's how long Tampa Bay kept the ball. And doesn't that do a lot now for this Tampa Bay defense, that kind of a rest? It sure does, Jim. That's what we were speaking about. Tampa Bay wants to control the ball now. Don't give it back to Kansas City. Now Kansas City's gone out of its wing tee. They're going to the pro set to open it up. Adams over the middle. He's hit his man. A jarring tackle here by Tampa Bay. Dewey Selman jarred loose the ball and will be called incomplete. Belton had it for an instant, but then he was really smack. Watch it. He's going to go back to the huddle and tell Adams, don't throw me that pass again. I don't want to see that kind anymore. I don't know what you thought, Roman, but I thought he almost had that ball long enough. Yeah, I think so, too. But it's real incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10 at the 38. There's the score, Green Bay 24, the Bears 7, and Seattle 6, Minnesota nothing. Jim Thorne, a 16-yard pass to Sam McCullen. That's going to be an interesting game. Adams on second down and 10. Off the flat to McArthur Lane over the 45-46. Penalty flag is dropped again in the Kansas City backfield. This game has been fraught with, with uh, penalties and mistakes, and they've cost both teams. You can tell from Tony Adams' head 
that this was going to go against the Chiefs and a costly one indeed because he had picked up a sizable game. Now that the Chiefs have to put the ball in the air to play catch up, it'll be interesting to see what kind of protection Adams gets. Well, it was a holding penalty against uh, Kansas City that takes it back to the 28. Second down and 20 to go now. Second and 20. That cost him about 38 yards. Look over to the sideline now. This is when you need help. To the right comes Larry Dorsey, and to the left is Henry Marshall. Five men out on the pattern. He's throwing to his back. MacArthur Lane, he can't hold it. Good coverage here by Curtis Jordan, who is playing in place of the injured Jarius White, number 25. Bad read, bad read there, Jim, on Adams' part. He threw right into the strength of the defense. Here he is dropping back. Tampa Bay, their strength at this time is right where he's throwing. He should have come back to the weak side. Right in here, as you can see on the monitor. He's also sending out every back, uh, Gable, and not keeping anybody in for blocking. I know that Tampa Bay has a three-man rush front, but that could be dangerous, too. It can be if Tampa sends a linebacker. All right, third and 20. Long yardage. They uh, look for Tampa Bay to be in a prevent defense this time. They're sending only three men. Adams up the middle, intercepted. Stepping in there is Cesar. He's back over 25, 35. He's down to the 30, and he's in over the 25-yard line. It's Cedric Brown. Cedric Brown, the free safety, stepped in to make the interception, and Tampa Bay is back knocking inside the Kansas City 25. There it is. He throws right into the strength of the coverage again. He has people open on the weak side or the back side of this zone. He should never have thrown that football. Throw, a... Throwing into coverage, and we'll give you a look here at... Uh, have a look at it. Cedric Brown running it back, and there's Dorsey. Number 80, Dorsey coming downfield, running a, a deep curl pattern, but there's Brown, the free safety, read it well, right into the strength of the defense. Uh, back the other way, and it'll be Tampa Bay's ball. And to the line for no gain on the play, and it was uh, Lewis Carter carrying for Tampa Bay. It'll be second down and 10. Whitney Paul makes the stop. Cleveland 24, New Orleans 9 in the fourth quarter. The Giants nothing. Dallas 7, 17 yard pass from Roger Stahl back to Tony Hill. Well, as we said a moment ago, I don't think I'd like to be in the Giants' shoes today. No, no way. Now with the Cowboys having lost a couple and with the Redskins riding out in front undefeated. Now they pitch it back to Carter, who looks like he stumbled and fell in the backfield, and then was covered immediately for a loss on the 25 by Sylvester Hicks. But Carter appeared to have stumbled a little bit. There must be a high spot on that football field. Well, that would be the only thing out of order here. This is the most magnificent facility I've ever seen. I agree with you. A little pitch back, a little pitch back to Carter here, number 32. Stubs his toe right here. Loses his balance. Maybe it's a good thing he did because he was getting ready to get smacked anyway. <laughs> Hicks, he got hit anyway. Hicks put a pretty good kiss on him anyway. Williams rolling. Williams rips it. It's complete to Owens at the 10. Owens is to the 5, still driving inside the 5-yard line. First and goal for Tampa Bay. Boy, Doug Williams now putting on a second-half show here. It started with a minute to go in the first half. Well, uh, he's sprinting out to the right. He throws the ball hard enough, setting up. And now sprinting out, he really puts a lot of stuff on it. That ball had to be thrown perfect. And it puts Tampa Bay now in business. First and goal at the four-yard line with a 10-point lead, 16-6 over the Kansas City Chiefs. about 3,000 times a day. After a hard two, it's back with my friend Ron. As soon as I knock this ball out of the park. When do you say fertilizer? It's everywhere. When my mother-in-law leaves town. <laughs> after a long night in here. Or when you say fertilizer. Let me hear you say it, people. Fertilizer. You have said it all. You give a man a couple of days to himself and a Black & Decker workmate, and there's almost nothing he can't do. You can pound on it, saw on it, hammer on it, and sand on it. The sturdy vice jaws do the holding for you. You can clamp on it, 
paint on it, cut a shape on it, drive a screw on it. There's almost nothing you can't do. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black and Decker. Player injured on the play was Kurt Schumacher, number 78, the left tackle. Picked up from uh, San Francisco and Waivers this year. He's done a good job, and he's been replaced now by number 68, Dan Medlin. And I want to tell you, he's from North Carolina State. That's not a bad place to be from. <laughs> pretty nice school, pretty nice country. Oh, uh, yes, Roman, we all remember. <laughs> Tampa Bay first and goal at the four. They'll have Williams, Bell, DuBose in the backfield. Johnny Davis has just gone off the field. DuBose has replaced him at fullback. Carter it is at tailback. They line up in the power eye, and now they shift. Wing T. They give it to Carter. Driving left side, about a yard. Nothing more than that, because the three ran into Sylvester Hicks. 248 pounds, six foot four inch uh, rookie. Just a straight hitter right up the pipe, the tailback. The Chiefs defense, they're not giving up. They're hanging in there pretty tough. Here's the score, Houston and Oakland. Well, no score. And here's the Rams and the 49ers, seven to three. 49ers fought back, 25 yard field goal by Ray Wershing. Well, you know, that's a great rivalry out there, Gable. Oh, remember from your days. Sure yeah. is. You never know what's gonna happen in that one. Second down play. They give it to Carter again. Sweeping. He'll score. Touchdown for Lewis Carter, his second one of the second half. Tampa Bay now has opened up a commanding lead. 22 to 6 with four minutes and 20 to go. Watch it again. There it is. Just a, an in sweep. Carter following the blocking there of his guard, number 68. Medl is that Medlin? Number 68. Medlin who replaced Schumacher. Good old North Carolina State boy doing the job. Now their ACC boy coming in behind him. <laughs> Lewis Carter, University of Maryland scoring number six, Neil O'Donoghue. In for the try after point. He missed his last chance. But not this time. This one is through. And Tampa Bay's open up a 17-point lead over Kansas City as the Buccaneers bidding for their third win of the year to become a 500 ball club. They've been that only once in the career of 2-2. Now they're well on the way to win number three with a lead of 23-6, fourth period. Ford introduces a new wagon for the American road. The all-new LTD Country Squire for 79. A new wagon with more driver convenience, more handling ease, more window area and more passenger room than last year's country squire. This land is your land. This land is my land. The all-new Ford LTD Country Squire for 79. See it at your Ford dealer now. try and forget one of America's largest life insurance companies Lincoln National Life we're easy to remember Tampa Bay kickoff back uh, deep waiting is Eddie Payton there he is you've heard of his brother Walter here comes Eddie number 34 he can go 40 45 50 look out for Eddie Payton one man to stop him He's on the 25-yard line, caught from behind. The man was Bill Cesar, a free agent from the University of Miami. The only man that could stop Eddie Payton. You know, Jim, that kind of kickoff, I'm sure their Tampa's plan to do this, but this kind of kickoff can get you in trouble. We did this against Green Bay in 1967, except that they took the ball in the wedge and pitched it back to Travis Williams, who went 101 yards against us. I tell you, brother Walter couldn't have done much better than that. Little Eddie, five foot eight, 175. There he is, number 34, caught by Cesar from behind. But number 34 for uh, Tampa Bay was the guy who really made the play, Cedric Brown, because he contained it. Okay, good chance here for Kansas City from the 25. Adams scrambling. Adams gonna run. Adams to the 20, and out of bounds inside the Tampa Bay 20-yard line. Good coverage back in the end zone. They have both Dorsey and 
Marshall down there, but the deep men did a good job for Tampa Bay. Danny there, Reese in particular. There he is coming back. Looking, he's got Marshall. He has Marshall open, but he don't see him. Adams doesn't see Marshall. I think Adams had a lot of other things on his mind right here. Oh, look here. Seattle, Jim Zorn and the boys. They always do a good job against the Vikings, Grandma Roman. They do. Seattle 13, Minnesota nothing. Jim Zorn having a good day. 12-yard run for one score. You know, that's Jack Patera against his old team. He's that's assistant coach at Minnesota, and they love to beat him, I know. Second down for Kansas City. About four yards to go. Up the middle, a quick trap. And the ball in there. Larry. Wally Chambers made the stop. Horace Belton's the carrier. Chambers hasn't been in that much. It was Tony Reed, number 32. Forgive me. Don't know about that call either. Well, they need a lot of points with three minutes and 40 seconds to go, but why would you say that? Well, here you are with, as you say, three minutes now, 35 seconds to go. Even if he gets 10 yards, it's going to take up 12, 13 seconds on the clock, and you still haven't scored. You need a score. They're too far behind to be running the football. Third down, about two yards to go. Pressure put on Adams. Adams to the end zone. Uh, might be an appearance. Nope. They're saying he was going for the ball. Well, you got an argument by Walter White on that. White had a collision down there. I think it was with Curtis Jordan. Good call. Good call. No interference there. Adams is back. He, he got out of traffic there. Fine move by Adams. He just tripped over his, over his feet. Well, back there was Danny Reese. Now penalty flag has been thrown. And this might be a verbal one because uh, tempers were flaring a little bit when uh, interference was not called. Walter White got tangled. Let's listen. Unsportsmanlike conduct. That's the signal. So they might have questioned his uh, ancestry a little bit. 15, 15 yards. Let's listen. the ball. He was playing the ball there, Jim. I don't think that was pass interference. Another angle. I think you're right. I don't think there was any contact. He was going for the interception. I think White made the contact after he hit the turf. Yeah. Fourth down and long yardage for Kansas City. Fourth and about six, 17 yards. Go, to the end zone and it is incomplete intended for white and uh, marshall it was broken up by cedric brown in the end zone incomplete penalty flag thrown though against tampa bay and this could give kansas city another chance had his tight end going down the pipe there number 88 walter white might have been able to get the ball to him this will preserve the fourth down for kansas city boy isn't it easy to sit up here and watch another quarterback throw to football you like this, right? It's a lot easier than doing it down there, I'll tell you. It'll be fourth down and 11. Now watch it. There's a drop back. He's throwing the ball down the middle. Either the wide receiver, number 89, Marshall, either broke the pattern or Adams just threw a bad ball. He threw it right in the arms of Cedric Brown. I think he was wise not to catch it because it was a fourth down pass. Adams again, fourth down, end zone. There's Marshall. Touchdown. Nice throw. Nice Beautiful throw. Beautiful catch by Marshall for the touchdown. And Kansas City has come through on fourth down. The Chiefs are still alive. Here it is here. Adams, a corner pattern by Marshall. Fine route, good protection. Right on the money. Another angle. Hey, Jim. The Kansas City Chiefs have just accomplished something for the first time this year. Their first touchdown pass by the air. How about that? That's right. That's the only team in the National Football League that had not thrown a touchdown pass. And Tony Adams has come off the bench here today to get his first starting assignment. As the song goes, by George, he did it. Point is good. It becomes 23 to 13. Ten-point lead by Tampa Bay, but... Still three minutes, six seconds to go. We got to see that catch by Henry Marshall one more time here with a little over three minutes to go in the first half. That was just a thing of beauty. Watch. This kind of play, you have to give credit to the offensive lineman because generally it takes three to four seconds to get this one off. Just a corner pattern to Marshall. Adams lays it up as well as it could be laid up. And not an inch to spare back at the end of that back of the end zone. 
But Marshall was in there to snare it on the dead run. Just a beautifully executed play, and Kansas City has kept alive faint hopes. 23-13, three minutes, six seconds to go. Well, now the pressure falls over to the Tampa Bay offense to try and eat up some of the clock. And Onside kick here, perhaps, Jim. Tampa Bay expecting it. They have put nine men up within 10 yards of the restraining line. And here's Stenerud has been put in to kick off. Now that's a switch. And Recession has been doing the kicking off. And now here's Stenerud. And perhaps his experience is in there just for that purpose. The onside. Yep, they're going to try. Onside. Oh, they got a chance, but it's recovered by Tampa Bay. Penalty flag thrown. I think Kansas City was offsides on the play. But there you see number 86 for the Buccaneers covering that ball. That's Jim Abradovich, a tight end. Penalty marker was dropped Sticky on the play. Offside, refused. Receivers want the ball. That was it. Chiefs and their anxiety to get down the field. The yellow way the ball is to kick. It was on the out of your screen on the right side. Right there is the man probably who jumped the gun, number 34. Stenner would kick that ball about as well as you could want it be, to be done in that situation. Watch again. Nice left-footed kick. Well, Bradovich did the smart thing, didn't try to pick it up. Cover the ball, Tampa Bay's ball. They have it at the 47-yard line of Kansas City. Leading by 10 points. And up to DuBose, who is smothered. Hit by Dave Lindstrom first. And then came an assistance in there for by Thomas Howard, the right side linebacker. No gain on the play, loss of a yard, second on 11. Chiefs have three timeouts left, so they can still get the ball again. They have to stop Tampa from getting a first down. What that 24 yards in one minute and 14 seconds into the fourth period. Two minutes and 36 seconds to go on the game. Tampa Bay trying to hold on here with a 10-point lead to win their third game of the year. Lewis Carter into the middle. Tough yardage stacked up around the 45. Dave Rosamick, first man to hit him, and now Kansas City's going to use its first timeout here to stop the clock with two minutes and 17 seconds to go. They'll let the two-minute warning stop at the next time. They'll try to stop the Buccaneers again and figure to get the ball with just under two minutes remaining in the game and still have some kind of a chance. Uh, here's the score, Jim. Dallas 7, New York Giants nothing. Joe Donnell, or Giants have scored three points. Joe Donnello, 37-yard field goal. A 7-3. And we want to remind you, too, that next weekend on CBS Sports Spectacular, the Women's Outdoor Tennis Championships, then the Jockey Club Gold Cup. That's the fall of Triple Crown. That's all next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Don't forget, too, the world's strongest men and Roman Gabriel thinking someday may be getting into that. That's right. Give me two years and I'll be right there with him. Uh, you can take on the Tuzak. Here we go. Third down play by Williams. Williams firing downfield. And it is caught by Owens. Out of bounds at 15. An incredible catch. He took it right away from Tim Gray. Watch Williams here. He sees pressure up the middle. Good speed for a big man. Throws the ball on the run about 35 yards. Don't know how he got it in there, but he did. Morris Owens has made some clutch catches today, and that was one of them because it keeps Tampa Bay in possession of the ball. It denies Kansas City a chance to get something going here as we come down toward the two-minute warning. 2.08 to go in the game, and now Tampa Bay not only keeping the ball but threatening to score itself for the first down at the Kansas City 14. Well, out for a Sunday stroll. Looking for a little Nassau bet. <laughs> Where's the first tee, huh? John McKay. Could be win number three this year for his young team. Here's a reverse play coming as Mucker. Mucker with the speed at the 15. Turning the corner to 10 to 5. Driven out of bounds, short of the goal line. Penalty flag thrown. Penalty flag is thrown against Kansas City, I believe, after he went out of bounds. Well, you would, you would never expect that play to be called in this at this juncture of the game. That was probably one of the biggest surprises that we've had in the football game. A little reverse action, handing it off to the flanker, coming around. Nobody there. Barbaro, 26 misses. 
And there's Rosenbach. He pops him good. It looked like uh, Muhammad Ali. That was the forearm. Mucker who runs 198. And uh, personal foul. First down. Of course, not much penalty here. It's only going to be like a 12-inch penalty, half the distance from the one-yard line. Watch it again. Watch the forearm. There. Well, we didn't get a good view of it there. But anyway, it was the forearm penalty. First and goal for Tampa Bay. They got less than a yard to go for another touchdown. They give it to DuBose, and he scores again. Jimmy DuBose scores another touchdown for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who've had it all their way in the second half. He's fallen at guard, number 64, Greg Horton, who was acquired from the Rams, opening up a big hole. One and, more and time. The big fullback. Right up the pipe, downtown. Well, this is the biggest scoring output of the year and of the career, I think, for Tampa Bay. They scored 24 points against, well, let's see. We'll check that in a moment. Let's watch the try over the point here by O'Donoghue. Kick is good. Tampa Bay has its 30th point and probably has iced the ball game now with uh, just uh, one minute and 58 seconds to go, the two-minute warning, and a 17-point lead, 30 to 13 over the Kansas City Chiefs. And now Tampa Bay will be looking to go to New York City next year, next week. An opportunity, Roman, to do something they've never been able to do. That is, have a winning record. That's right. They look like a pretty good football team at this point, uh, Jim. Their defense, which has been solid, now it looks as though their offensive line is starting to play together. They're going to put some points on the board before the season's over. They've done that here today in the second half. They've scored 20 points in the second half and actually 27 points in uh, the last 31 minutes of the ball game, as it turns out, because they score with 31 seconds to go in the half. Coming up, New York Giants trying to hold off the Dallas Cowboys and they're going to find them in an ornery mood after the loss to the Washington Redskins. It's seven to three at last report, so hasn't been that much happened. We're going to be joining in there. Well, there's Eddie Payton, Walter Payton's kid brother, five foot eight, 175, and he almost electrified this crowd a moment ago with a great run back, and almost went all the way. They don't kick it to him. They're going to lateral it back up. It's going to be kept here by an up lineman. Up over the 30 comes Clarence Sanders and piled up around the 31 or 32. Sanders was looking around for Peyton and couldn't find him. Oh, with one minute and 52 seconds to go here, the picture's been set to you today. Our producer, Tom O'Neill, <laughs> smiling Irishman, and Duke Struck, the director today. We've seen a lot of great replays different angles the game. Rupe Kopanex, the pride of the Via Carre. And the other men who have been in charge of the telecast today here from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Desperation now for the Chiefs. It's hit to McLean at the 39, short of a first down. Fairly good gain on the play. The lane stopped by Mark Cotney. Time's clicking off. The Chiefs in their hurry-up offense, which maybe they should have started about 10 minutes ago. Up the middle, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Walter White, who has not had a good day. Dropped a couple of passes and then tripped and fell a moment ago near the goal line for what could have been a score for Kansas City to keep it in the game at that time. Seattle 13, Minnesota 7, Tarkington to Ahmad Rashad, two-yard pass. Oakland 7, Houston 3. All other action, and you'll be seeing the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants shortly. We're coming down to the end of this game. One minute, 28 seconds to go. Tony Adams been all the way today. Off of the flat, he has hit Dalton over the 40, trying to get the first down. Stops the clock, and I think has the first down. Billy Cesar making the stop for Tampa Bay. Green Bay 24, Chicago 14. Avellini to James Scott, 17 yards. That's all he could do there. Adams had to go to his back. There's nobody open downfield. All receivers doubled up on. Him. Picks up the first down with 1.21 to go. Kansas City has been taken out of its wing tee now. They've had to go to the air, falling way behind. 
yards, a sideline pass thrown wide of Marshall out of bounds. Now one minute 17 to go and second down and 10. Kansas City faces the task next week of traveling to Oakland as Tampa Bay looks to New York and the Giants. They'll catch the Giants coming off the Dallas Cowboys. And as it stands right now, we'll be trying for the first time in history to get a winning record. Right now, three and three. And will be when this game ends. 30 to 13, the score. Buccaneers leading. San Diego 14, Denver nothing. Well, San Diego's had an unfortunate season. Something went mixed up there. There was a Tampa Bay player jumped off size. Looked like he got back. And then some hesitation by Kansas City. Little excitement down there this late in the game. Well, illegal procedure. No doubt will be refused. <laughs> Now they're going to penalize Tampa Bay. Personal foul. Well, we had double penalties, and under the new rule this year, if one is a 15-yard penalty, you take that. So there were two fouls on the play. They were not offsetting. Well, let's see if the Chiefs can get to Walter White to find tight end. The way the Buccaneers are setting up now, this late in the game, tight end could be the guy to get to. 1.15 to go. 42-yard line of Tampa Bay. San Diego. Denver nothing. San Diego 14. Cry, you know they're going to want to win that one, right? Remember what happened early in the year. That's right. At Denver on uh, what was a very controversial play. Well, San Diego's been waiting and waiting. Over the middle again. That's grabbed by Walter White, the tight end. Around 32. He's taken down immediately. It may be a first down. They'll spot his motion. It is another first down for Kansas City. Well, the Chiefs are picking up some yardage. They spent another timeout. They'll have one more to go. 45 seconds on the clock. It would seem that Kansas City has time perhaps to score, but that would be about it. 45 seconds to go, and John McKay, who set a five-year plan to build a winner at Tampa Bay, seems to be right on schedule. It's a pretty good-looking ball club. They look good. They're playing well. They have a lot of character and a lot of poise at this point. Boy, 16 years at uh, Southern California, had four national champions, so he knows what he's doing, and he's built a solid defense. I brought in Doug Williams, who's going to be a spectacular player, without she, any doubt. She looked like she knew what she was doing. I wasn't noticing. What did you? What were you talking about? <laughs> Kansas City's guys. One timeout remaining, as we said. 45 seconds on the clock. Time, uh, perhaps, for the Chiefs to score again, but that would appear to be about it. 30-13, Tampa Bay in the lead. Chiefs uh, and the Buccaneers both have had some injury problems today. Buccaneers lost Jerris White, the left corner linebacker, with a concussion in the first half, and John McKay with a bruised hand. They got Wally Chambers in there now for the first time in the ball game. Well, he's back okay. He's had some trouble with his knee. He's been playing well. Up the middle, Adams hits his man White inside the 15-yard line. Walter White, a big tight end, or Henry Marshall. They were both down there. I think that's Marshall. He was shaken up. There it is, just a curl over the middle. Which Tampa Bay at this time in the ball game, they're going to give the Chiefs anything like that just to keep them out of the end zone. Might even give them one in the end zone. Marshall took a pretty good hit, and he isn't getting up. It'll be a first down for Kansas City. 29 seconds to go, and now they're within range. Watch once more. Right on the button. Nice reception. Nice tackle. Good hit. That yeah, was the second man by Curtis Jordan that came on the initial tackle by Cedric Brown. Then Curtis Jordan, who has replaced Jarris White at the corner spot. Henry Marshall will come out. Tony Samuels, who can play the tight end or wide receiver, will go in. Samuels, by the way, is a native of Tampa, Florida. Went to Florida a and then transferred to Bethune Cookman, so he gets a chance here to play against a team from his hometown. There's Marshall. He's all right, although he's holding his left arm. Took a pretty good lick from Jordan. It'll be first down Kansas City with 29 seconds to go. Chiefs here are trying to get back uh, one more score before time runs out. Safety blitz. 
Not going to get through, though. Good job. Oh, it's intercepted. Out of the end zone will come Reese. Reese over the 10 to the 12-yard line. Danny Reese intercepted by a yard in the end zone. Watch. The there it is here. Adams dropping back. Has time. Puts the ball down to the wrong color jersey. Had a safety blitz coming that time. That's unusual. Tampa Bay up by 30 to 13 with 20 seconds to go in the game and bringing the safety. Something went wrong with the safety blitz because uh, he didn't get through, but good coverage down there by Danny Reese. Another one of John McKay's players from Southern California. So that will be the last threat by Kansas City. Tampa Bay takes over with 21 seconds to go. They can run out the clock here with a 30 to 13 score. That's the most lopsided win they've had. Doug Williams just falls on it. Kansas City can stop the clock one time if they choose to. I don't think they're going to. That should be the final score of the ball game. We're in the final 10 seconds and rolling. And Tampa Bay, under the passing arm of Doug Williams, has rolled to its most impressive win of the year thus far, and its third of the season to pull back even at 500 on the year, defeating Kansas City today. And a happy flight home it'll be for John McKay and his boys who will leave Kansas City shortly here and head back toward the Tampa Bay area. The 30 to 13 is the final score. This is Jim Thacker for Roman Gabriel saying goodbye from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Coming next, exciting Eastern Division action as the young New York Giants take on the world champion Dallas Cowboys. That's immediately following right here on CBS. As the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. This is...